For the final chapter in Fukuoka, unfinished business awaits. Tonight, Japan and Cuba, the favorites, finally meet. While the uniform may look familiar, the men of Samurai Japan fight for this group's identity, out to prove they can keep tradition alive with another World Baseball Classic title. Tonight, their biggest test so far, Cuba. But what better way to announce your presence than to take down the best? Cuba, the world's number one, carries the scars of 2006 and 2009, missed opportunities on the world's biggest stage. Their nemesis in both tournaments, Japan. Tonight, two-time champ and world's number one. Both teams ready to deliver their message before we move on to Tokyo. Our final night in Fukuoka, and they have saved the best for last. The two-time champion, Japan, the world's number one, Cuba, before both move on to Tokyo. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Buck Martinez. These two have been eyeing each other all week long, and they finally meet here. The stakes are not high. But don't tell that to the managers of both ball clubs. Yeah, both managers think it's very important that their players really have a good approach to this ball game tonight. We saw Victor Mesa on the field. He was coaching everybody tonight, the hitters, the fielders, the base runners. He was all over the place. Koji Yamamoto, the Japanese manager, too, he thinks it's very important that they maintain a high level of focus in this game tonight. One of the treats here in Fukuoka for us has been watching Cuba take batting practice. It's must-see television. And one of the guys that has been impressive, and he finally broke out in a ball game against China, Jose Abreu. Yeah, Jose Abreu is the big bat in the lineup, and it took a while for Cuba to really get going, but Abreu in the fifth inning with the bases loaded against China on Monday goes deep. A grand slam home run. He would drive in five against China, and this is their calling card. They need to knock the ball out of the ballpark. So coming off that game on Monday, they want to maintain that momentum. The bats really came alive for Cuba against China. Japan's concerned about offense. We spoke with some players behind the cage, and even they admitted they had to get the bats going. One guy that in a Japanese season last year hit 24 home runs, Sho Nakata for Nippon Ham. He's shown signs of coming out of it. Yeah, he sure has. Two for four in the last game he played. He did not start in game one, and they don't have a power-laden lineup. They need Nakata to get his timing down. And remember, these Japanese players, just like the players from the United States, they're in spring training. Their timing isn't really keen yet. They're all in need of the bats, and they're hopeful that Nakata gets it going tonight against Cuba. But the crowd, when Japan <laughs> plays, is in regular season form. Boy, they sure are, and they're looking forward to this matchup. They know what's at stake. Bragging rights. They want to go up against Cuba, and they're going to be engaged here tonight from the first pitch on. Yeah, I know. Both are headed to Tokyo in the next round, but both want to establish something here tonight. Japan and Cuba to finish our week in Fukuoka. is a special presentation of the World Baseball Classic. For the final chapter in Fukuoka, unfinished business awaits. Tonight, Japan and Cuba, the favorites, finally meet. While the uniform may look familiar, the men of Samurai Japan fight for this group's identity, out to prove they can keep tradition alive with another World Baseball Classic title. Tonight, their biggest test so far, Cuba. But what better way to announce your presence than to take down the best? Cuba, the world's number one, carries the scars of 2006 and 2009, missed opportunities on the world's biggest stage. Their nemesis in both tournaments, Japan. Tonight, two-time champ and world's number one. Both teams ready to deliver their message before we move on to Tokyo. For the final 
time, we are in Fukuoka, and they've saved the best for last. Japan and Cuba, two-time champ, world number one, both at 2-0, and, oh, and both are headed on to Tokyo. So are we, Rich Waltz, along with Buck Martinez. Welcome to this one. These two have been eyeing each other from across the diamond all week long. They finally get to play. Not a whole lot's at stake. There is some seeding at stake. But don't tell that to both managers of these teams. Now, bragging rights certainly are at stake here tonight. And Koji, Koji Yamamoto of the Japanese team and Victor Mesa of Cuba both are really intense. They want their players to come out and play this game as if there's a lot on the line. They don't want to lose that edge before they head to Tokyo. When Cuba is playing, get there early to watch batting practice. It's quite a show, and we knew they would break out sooner or later. They did against China. Jose Abreu had the big blow in that ball game. Boy, he sure did, and they've been waiting a long time for the big bats to wake up, and evidently they have. Abreu in the fifth inning against China with the bases loaded goes deep, a monster home run. He would drive in five in that game against China, and all of a sudden, the powerful bats have awakened here in Fukuoka. They don't want to lose that edge. They want to make sure they have good at bats tonight against Japan. I think the concern around this Japan team is where are they going to get their runs? They they have not scored a lot. They've scored five in each game. There's some concern. A guy like Sho Nakata, 24 home runs last year for Nippon Ham, is a guy they're counting on. Well, they sure are. They don't have much power, and they certainly need Nakata to get it going. He, play, he played in the game last time and went two for four. He drove in a run. But these Japanese players, much like the players in the major leagues, are in the midst of spring training. Their timing isn't sharp as compared to Cuba, who's basically in their all-star break. So the Japanese player needs some more at bats, and they're anxious to get their timing down before they head to Tokyo. They know the competition really increases in Tokyo because of the extra pool. Crowds in midseason form, though. They'll be loud tonight. <laughs> Boy, they sure will. They've been waiting on this matchup all week long. Cuba and Japan, two of the world powerhouses. And they're going at it. Before we head to Tokyo, they meet tonight. Japan and Cuba. tonight, big and loud tonight in Fukuoka as the home team is actually the visitors in this ball game. Here's Japan starting lineup. Isione Chono is in center field. Kaz Matsui is at second base. Hirokazu Ibata, the designated hitter. Shinosuke Abe will do the catching. Abe, the MVP last year in the Japanese League for the champion Giants. Hayata Sakamoto has been moved from the leadoff spot down to the five spot. He's just one for eight so far. Yoshio Itoi in right field. He's had a very nice series, three for seven. He's driven in four. Sho Nakata in left. Atsunori Inaba is at first. And Nobuhiro Matsuda will be playing third and hitting ninth. And Wilbur Perez is the epitome of a, uh, a crafty left-hander. Well, he sure is. He's 35, 36 years old. This is his first opportunity to pitch for Cuban World Baseball Classic. He pitched in the 2012 season. He went 7-16, and 16, but this year he's up to a good start. He's won nine games already, and he is a finesse pitcher. He's not going to blow you away with his fastball. He's going to use a breaking ball. He's got both a curveball and a slider and a very good straight changeup. But they're a little interested to see how he's going to react to this supercharged atmosphere here in Fukuoka as he takes on the home team Japan. Cuba defensively tonight behind Perez. Now, Fredo Despine is in left field. Guillermo Heredia is the center fielder. Yasmani Tomas gets a start in right. He's played pretty well coming off the bench. Guriel and Array Baruena, the shortstop on the left side. Jose Fernandez has had a very big tournament here in Fukuoka. Jose Abreu, the big power hitting first baseman, and Ariel Sanchez starts for the third time behind the plate. It's going to be interesting to see how this game unfolds. Both of these teams are headed on to Tokyo. Seeding is involved. The winner obviously goes in as the number one seed out of Fukuoka. Japan and Cuba. And 
Wilbur Perez is ready and his first pitch a fastball for a strike to Hisayoshi Chono Chono up in the leadoff spot as we noted Hayata Sakamoto the fine shortstop has been moved down to the number five spot in the order. Yeah the manager Koji Yamamoto has done a lot of shuffling in this lineup tonight he's trying to figure out what's going to get the Japanese offense clicking they're really not swinging the bats all that well just yet. Five runs against Brazil in a 5 3 win. Five runs against China in a 5 0 win. Keep in mind that Cuba, and they're already at it out there. Cuba beat China 12 0 in a shortened game of just seven innings. Yeah, Cuba in that game really broke out. They had power. Victor Mesa, the manager, was very animated during batting practice. and not really that unusual but in a game it really doesn't have much meaning it was kind of surprising he even hit fungos to the outfielders during infield something we hadn't seen him do prior to this game tonight well, you could see Perez right now trying to keep his emotions in check he wasn't happy on the two one pitch you got a veteran major league umpire behind there Jerry Davis there's your run scored in the first round and the pitch foul back and out of play the count is full. <laughs> Look at Mesa telling the catcher, hey, relax a little bit out there. He's trying to get Perez to relax. He said, hey, you need to throw strikes, trust your stuff. Maybe the most animated manager of Pool A. Swing and a miss. I think he was sitting breaking ball, and Perez with a fastball gets a strikeout for out number one. Yeah, it was interesting. He bounced the curveball earlier in the at bat, and here he throws a fastball away that Chono reaches for. He's not overpowering by any means. He's going to pitch in the low 80s at best. Team's band's going to have to think about going the other way against Perez and not try to pull him too much. Scouting report for Japanese hitters from the right side of the plate, just in talking to other teams in Pool A, is that the right handed hitters will go away. You either have to go way in or way out. And that last pitch was out enough. Here's Matsui, Japan's second baseman. Matsui, of course, spent time over in Major League Baseball with three different clubs, went to the World Series with the Colorado Rockies. 2007, and he's a veteran of three Japanese series finals. Played seven years in the big leagues, and we spoke to him before the game and asked him about the comparison between playing in the World Series and the Japanese series and he didn't even think about the World Series he thought about that final game of the regular season in 2007 in which Colorado took on San Diego and they played 13 innings with Matt Holliday sliding across home plate to win the game. No swing. I think face plant is probably a better description <laughs> of Holiday coming across. That was a, a major collapse by the Padres in 2007 and of course Clint Hurdle and the Rockies rode that all the way to the World Series. Yeah. San Diego scored two in the top of the 13th. Kaz Matsui scored the first of three Colorado runs in the bottom of the 13th. And Matsui swings. Did he get a piece? No he didn't. Matsui thought he fouled it. David said no. And Wilbur Perez this may be his first WBC start. But he's looking good so far with two strikeouts. Well, and Team Japan's going to have to relax a little bit. You don't have to go out and get Perez because he's not going to overpower you. You don't have to worry about him beating you with his fastball. So stay back, think soft, and think up the middle and opposite field. <laughs> See, watching Perez there fumble the ball gives you an idea that he might have a little bit of nerves, even though he is a veteran, as you noted, 36, a veteran of many national series in. Cuba that's the name of this season that they play in Cuba a 90 game schedule from November through April so these Cuban players have come out of their regular season to compete in the World Baseball Classic. Yeah and because of that their timing is much better at the fight their pitchers are in much better shape and they are basically in mid season form compared to the Japanese players as we mentioned they're still in spring training mode. You know Kazo Ibata. And he takes the strike the counts 0 and 1. He might have had a big hit in the first game against Brazil. He came on as a pinch hitter and had an RBI single to tie the game up at 2 2. He 
interesting thing is that's his only at bat in this series. It will start tonight, as we mentioned. Japanese manager Yamamoto is trying to figure out which combination is going to click offensively for Japan. 0 2 pitch from Perez and a ground ball up the middle diving stop there by Fernandez and no chance to get Ibata. Even though he's 37 Ibata gets down the line quite well. Well and he does exactly what we had talked about breaking ball look for a breaking ball it's away he takes it right back up the middle. Jose Fernandez has had a good series he gloves it and from his knees throws to first but not in time to get him out there. Shinosuke Abe. The colorful catcher of the Tokyo Giants. There are seven Giants on Samurai Japan. Of course the Giants won the Japanese series last year and Abe had a terrific season. He hit 340 for the regular season with 27 home runs and he was on fire the final month of the regular season raised his batting average 40 points. He did not start in game one for Japan. He's been bothered by a right knee. He injured it in a exhibition game prior to this tournament. But we talked to him about it today and he said he's fine 100 percent ready to go. Abe will turn 34 in about two weeks on the 20th of March. He'd like to celebrate his birthday in San Francisco. Here's a 1 1. Abe gets into it. Right center field and deep. Heredia back at the track. And he's got it. Right at the wall. Way to start a charge thrown into this crowd. Abe comes up just short. The Japanese fans here, when Samurai Japan has played, have really turned out, and many of them fans of the soft and box. And they're going to look at this Cuba lineup that leads it off. Guillermo Heredia in center, Julieski Gurriel at third, Jose Fernandez at second base, Freddy Cepeda, the designated hitter. Jose Abreu at first, Alfredo de Spain at left. Yasmani Tomas has looked good and he's earns a start. Real Sanchez is it uh, is behind the plate. Barbaro Arrua Barruena is the shortstop. And he hits ninth. And a fastball for a strike. And Kenji Atanari gets things going. He's not a big guy. 5'9, 187. Atanari is pitching on his home mound. He pitches for the soft bank. Hawks right here in this ballpark. He went 12 and 8 a year ago with a 203 ERA. Pitched in 25 games. And he jumps ahead of the leadoff hitter, Heredia. Heredia won for eight so far in the two ball games. Cuba's got a nice mix of veteran presence and youngsters that are really starting to get their feet on the ground in international competition, and Heredia is one of those youngsters. And this for Cuba is a nice way to finish pool A by going up against Japan before they get to Tokyo where the Netherlands and Chinese Taipei wait. And the big news I guess around uh, Tokyo is that Korea will not be there. The one two pitch fly ball right field. Yoshio Itoi is there and he makes the catch. Japan always good defensively. Take a look at the defense for Japan. Shonagata in left. is a Yoshi Chono in center, and Yoshi Ito is in right. Matsuda and Sakamoto on the left side. Matsuri and Anabe on the right side. And the MVP in the Central League, Shinosuke Abe, is behind the plate. Here is Yulieski Guriel, and he bounces one to third. It's a fair ball. Matsuda across the diamond. And Atanari gets it out on a pitch to the third baseman for Cuba. Well, remember, 
both of these starters all the pitchers are dealing with a pitch count and anytime you can have a short pitch count inning that's a real bonus that's just six pitches now to pick up two outs I think for both managers their regular lineup they want the regulars in there maybe mix in a few guys that they want to get some at bats for it's different with the starting pitchers they're not going to start anyone that they really I think want to use or feature early in Tokyo they may let someone come in in relief for an inning or two that they want to stay have stay sharp but uh, I don't think either manager wants to show the other team much of anyone that's going to throw in Tokyo now these two teams are going to meet again and they're not going to expose their hand Victor Mason knows that the Japanese team are loaded with good pitching especially they are deep in starting pitching off the end of the bat Fernandez picks it up and an eight pitch inning for Kenji Atanari. We're underway and scoreless. Scoreless in the second, Japan and Cuba. Upcoming schedule, Cuba versus Netherlands or Chinese Taipei. And Japan will play the late game in Tokyo on Friday night. Chinese Taipei, one pool B. Netherlands is the runner up in that pool. Japan's going to play the ninth game no matter what happens in this game just because of the TV audience over here in Japan. Rightly so, so we don't really know who their opponent will be until the end of this game. And I would expect that uh, both those teams that are either in Tokyo by now watching tonight already had some workouts we're told at the Tokyo Dome will be there tomorrow as all four teams will work out. Well, the big wild card for Chinese Taipei is Chen Ming Wong. He went six innings, allowed four hits, no runs, didn't walk a batter, and struck out two in his first start against Australia. That's big news because not only is he effective in this tournament, but he's also a free agent. He's going to make himself a pretty penny over here if he has another game like that in Tokyo. Wilbur Perez with a breaking ball, and Ayata Sakamoto swings and misses. Counts three and two. Perez. 
struck out a pair gave up an infield hit back in the first. There's a roller wide of third and foul. So Friday we'll be there. We hope you'll join us. Netherlands is really interesting. They've got a lot of talented offensive players and Diego Mar Markwell pitched well for them in Tai Chung. Heredi is under it and he makes the catch. Sakamoto is out number one in the second. And you know, the Netherlands is no longer a Cinderella. You look at the team that they've got, and it's loaded not only with major league talent, but some really top prospects. They've got good starting pitching. They can score runs. They can play defense. It's fun to see where they've come from 2009, where they did get to the second round. But I think this it's a very different team than we saw in 2009. I had them in the first round in, in Puerto Rico. You had them in the second round in Miami. Yeah, and they have the former Major League All-Star Andrew Jones, who's going to play this summer in Japan. He's a veteran. He's been their DH. They have Roger Bernardino. They have Jonathan Scope. And they've got some talented players. Andrew, Vladimir Valentin. Andrelton Simmons is a guy that uh, we both have seen in the big leagues. Simmons with the Atlanta Braves. Valentin's an interesting guy because he's the two time home run champ here in Japan. Yeah, they've got a lot of talent, and we mentioned Diego Mar Markwell, left handed pitcher, pitched very well in that first round, so. It'll be interesting to see how the Netherlands fares. But you're right, nobody thinks of them as being a Cinderella now. Remember, in 2009, they knocked off the Dominican Republic twice. And Toy bounces one into center field. That's a base hit. He has been Japan's best hitter in the three ball games. The Toy now is four for eight. He's got four RBIs, a one out single here in the second. Yeah, he had a three run triple. In the win against China, he cleared the bases and really broke that game wide open. Another good approach from Itoy as he doesn't try to do too much with it. Perez left the fastball out over the plate, and Itoy takes it right back up the middle. And right now, the pitching coach for Cuba is on his way out to the mound. This is a, a rather early visit here. I don't know if. There's something wrong with Wilbur Perez. He's given up just a couple of hits. It's not like he's getting shelled here. No, it's really kind of curious that they would come to the mound this early. But you can bet we saw Victor Mesa get on Perez in the first inning as Perez looked like he was a little bit tight. And then, of course, the one thing that's really going to help you relax is your manager is screaming from the dugout, <laughs> relax! <laughs> so. We were talking about Victor Mesa and trying to compare him to a major league manager. And I think you came up with a, a hybrid, a, a part Ozzie Ginn, uh, part Lou Pinello. Yeah, and you know what? Victor Mesa is intense, and he certainly wears his emotions on his sleeve. He was a great player and a great manager in Cuba, and he just wants his team to go deep into this tournament. And when he sees something that he doesn't think is going right, he's going to let the players know about it. Same as Ozzie Guillen and Lupinella. There you go. Here's Nakata. Show Nakata. Two for four. With an RBI. And Perez twice now has gone to first after the visit to the mound. Nakata, we were talking about where will Japan find their power. Abe, of course, with 27 homers this past season. Well, Nakata hit 24. Second in the Pacific League. He shoots a ground ball in the left field. And so Japan right now playing station to station. He's got Itoy at second and Nakata at first. This is going to be interesting to see how Mesa approaches this game. If Japan should really start to swing the bats well, what's Mesa going to do to cool them off? You don't want Japan to gain confidence against your ball club as you're headed to the next round. So it'll be interesting to see how Mesa handles this ball game. Already Japan with three hits against Perez. And you certainly don't want Japan standing in the batter's box taking good hacks all night long, gaining all the confidence they want to carry that into Friday's matchup in Tokyo. 
Well, whenever Atsunori Inaba comes in, the Inaba shake hits. That's what they do in his hometown in Sapporo. And Inaba, a longtime Japanese big leaguer, lines it to left. Despain is there. And no more shaking for that at bat. Yeah, and Nab is really scuffling right now. In fact, he took 20 minutes of extra BP yesterday on the off day as you look at the <laughs> Cuban bullpen already. They've got two guys up already. Yeah, and that's exactly what I thought Mesa would do because you don't want Perez to give up a bunch of hits and really allow Japan to get their timing down in this game. It's almost like he's playing this like an elimination game. You just don't want your pitcher to get pounded on in this ball game where Japan can gain the confidence. Remember, Cuba gained confidence against China when they had that 12 0 win. And the big bats really came alive. The last thing Mesa wants to do tonight against his team is allow Japan to do that. Nobuhiro Matsuda, the number nine hitter, and he takes down low. And Buck, on the, on the other hand, I don't think Japan has a whole lot of confidence coming off. A 5-3 win over Brazil. Remember, they were down in the eighth inning in that ball game, and a 5-0 win against China, which was a lot tougher than the score sounds. Yeah, they have not really hit the ball well, and Koji Yamamoto, the manager, knows that. I mean, he was a big power hitter in his playing days, and we didn't have that kind of attack in this lineup. And went foul back to the screen. Well, you talked about Victor Mesa, what a great he, player he was. Koji Yamamoto, in his 18 years, a two time MVP, a perennial All Star, and batting titles. He did an awful lot in his career. Ten time Gold Glover in center field. He had 536 career home runs. Then he went on to have a terrific career as a manager. Played 18 years, managed 10 years. Last year managing was 2005. Wilbur Perez, his first World Baseball Classic start, the 36 year old lefty. Had a rocky year last year, but has nine wins already this year and a good breaking ball for a strike. Yeah, and Cuba knows what they're facing as they head toward Tokyo. Bigger ballpark, more intensity. The home team, Japan, trying to defend their WBC crown. They've won both tournaments prior to this one. And they're going to get all the support they need in Tokyo. That, you know, that's one of the things that's unsaid about Cuba. They're always playing on the road. They are always playing in front of crowds like this. They don't, uh, you know, they have to travel outside of Cuba, obviously, to go to tournaments, to go to world competitions. So this, uh, this doesn't bother them. They've been here, done that, but they've not been here and won that. They've come up empty in 2006 and 2009. This year they come in as the number one team, ranked number one team in the world. One two pitch coming. And Suda strikes out and Perez has given up three hits but he hasn't given up a run. Cuba and Japan from Fukuoka and scoreless. Energy. Tell me what that says Rich. That says. Oh show. <laughs> Buck Martinez, welcome here. <laughs> Baseball spoken here, that fastball foul back. Freddy Cepeda, as he's called, Frederick Cepeda. Cepeda's had a nice tournament. He's four for seven, he's doubled, and he's tripled. And I think he would be a guy for Buck Martinez, Pool A, all tournament team. Yeah, he's starting to really get it. He's a switch hitter that was really comfortable as a right handed hitter coming into this tournament and as the tournament has progressed that left handed bats coming around as well. 
Now last night midway through the ball game, as uh, China played Brazil I asked you if you were to name that Buck Martinez pool a all tournament team if you might include one Ray Chang as your shortstop you said you know it's going to be tough a lot of competition there. Well I, I hope that you have not filled out your ballots yet. Boy Ray Chang had quite a tournament didn't he. <laughs> what a game last night he had the game winning hit for China to guarantee their birth in the 2017 WBC. I know you and I have called a lot of baseball games but last night was one of the most phenomenal games that I've seen just having watched China play for three nights knowing what they were capable of and knowing how good Brazil was and then seeing China come back and in their manager's words do things he'd never seen them do before to get the win that one foul back and out of play. Yeah they worked the count something they hadn't seen from his players at all John McLaren said we went up there and we look for good pitches we didn't get him any good pitches and they took advantage of the wild pitchers from Brazil because all of a sudden Brazil lost the strike zone and China took advantage of that. They scored five runs on two hits in the eighth inning to win it. Three two pitch coming to the powerful Cepeda and he smacks one in the air to right center field over for it is Chono and it toy is there. It's a toy who makes the catch. All right, you want some Ray Chang? You get some Ray Chang. Third hit of the night for Ray Chang. His team is down by one. He drives in two to give China the lead. They would add on two more runs for the cushion, and you can see the emotion. John McLaren said he had never been in a dugout where the team was so into it in that eighth inning, and this is a guy that's been around the big leagues 26 years. But they were chanting, they were screaming the guys names and it was an organized effort by the dugout and the players on the field and they rallied for one of the most emotional wins you'll ever see. Yeah there were coaches in tears players in tears and it, it, it was quite a, a sight to see. Here's a Brayu who hammered one about 15 rows up into left field for a grand slam against China. He's driven in five in two games. Yeah he's starting to get locked in he becomes a very dangerous hitter. You know the, I, I found him. I guess to, to finish the story and put a bow on it we told you the story of Art Howe pulling Ray Chang aside after game one and saying Ray you're trying to do too much you're trying to carry this team. That's not you just be Ray Chang. And last night at the press conference through an interpreter someone asked him a question about his approach and and, and Chang thought about it and said. I was just trying to be Ray Chang out there. The 2 1 misses down low, and he was. Ever since, once Art Howe had that talk with him after game one, he sprayed line drives all over this place. Yeah, he sure did. And he was trying to hit a home run. Of course, he hit a home run in 2009 in the WBC to sew up the only win for China in that tournament. And he's done it again. Here's a 3 1 pitch and a swing and a miss by Abreu. Otanari with a terrific pitch. Yeah, another good breaking ball, tight spin, and it's down and in. And you can see Abreu on his back swing, caught Abe on his catching hand with that bat. 3 2. Got him again. Off speed pitch in the dirt. Well, the Left hander has his first strikeout. It's interesting that another breaking ball gets a break. He's a very good breaking ball hitter, but it gets a little over anxious. This ball is out of the zone. It might have been a changeup that skipped right off home plate. And Otonari has done a pretty good job of utilizing his breaking ball and changeup early in this game. Alfredo de Spain is up. Otonari from the stretch, a swing and a miss. Well, he. The bottom of the eighth here wasn't the only dramatic bottom of the eighth in World Baseball Classic play yesterday. Last night, Korea scored three runs in the bottom of the eighth to win it. But in order to advance, they needed to beat Chinese Taipei by five runs. And of course, they were the home team and they won three to two in that final game. But ironically, the win sealed their fate because they didn't win by five runs over Chinese Taipei and all three of those teams the Netherlands Chinese Taipei and Korea 
finished the pool with a two and one record. And you got to know the Netherlands was watching that game and knew exactly how many runs were needed as well. And they advance. Both those teams, Chinese Taipei and the Netherlands, as we noted, worked out at the Big Egg, which is what they call the Tokyo Dome around Tokyo. We'll be there tomorrow for a workout and, of course, a doubleheader to open up the second round in Tokyo. 0 2 pitch. Oh, he came in and just missed. Missed with that fastball, and you can bet the Cuban hitters are thinking off speed pitch with two strikes. And Shinosuke Abe, the veteran catcher behind the plate, tries to cross him up. Tries to catch that inside corner and finish off the inning. End of the bat, that one rolls foul. We had a conversation with Abe, the catcher for Japan, and we asked him about the significance of this game tonight. He said, we haven't played Cuba for a while. I'm going to use this game to gain information on strengths and weaknesses of the Cuban lineup. So he wants to challenge these guys, and he's going to mix up a lot of different pitches tonight. One, two. High fastball, high pop-up. Itoy is there. And he makes the catch. And so far, Otanari has been outstanding. Scoreless, you can see Japan has three hits. Two of them came in the second inning. And that's when Wilbur Perez finished off Nobuhiro Matsuda. Here's the high fastball and struck out Matsuda in the inning and shut down the Japanese threat. There are three strikeouts now for Wilbur Perez. There have been times when he looks a little bit rattled, but he's starting to gain his confidence. 18 pitches in each of the first two innings for Perez. Perez misses outside a fastball, top of the order. It's a Yoshi Chono is the hitter. They play Chono, a right-handed hitter, well towards right field, especially in the outfield. There is an enormous gap in left center field. You can see that batter's eye is dead center, and that's how far the center fielder is over into right center. That's yeah, pretty interesting that they would use that much of a shift given the fact that Perez doesn't throw that hard. If they happen to leave something on the inside part of the plate, Chono, he can hit a ball in that gap. But you see there he misses with the fastball. They're trying to work him away. 86 is a pretty good fastball for Perez, given the fact that he's got a very good changeup and a nice slow curveball. Perez in his first couple of innings has had one eye on the plate and one eye on the dugout. Because Cuba and their manager, Victor Mesa, <laughs> They've had the bullpen up for the second time now. They've got a righty and a lefty up. Well, we mentioned the significance of this game, and although it doesn't have a lot to do with the seeding, they're both going to advance to the second round. Cuba has never defeated Japan in the WBC. You don't think that Victor Mesa wants to snap that string right now before they head to Tokyo and face the prospects of meeting up again. All right, let's see if Kazmatsui is bunting. Likelihood is high. Perez to the plate. Matsui takes a fastball up. Don't be surprised by Koji Yamamoto bunting in this situation. Early in the tournament, he had his cleanup hitter sacrifice. They weren't able to get anything going against Brazil, and he had Yoshio Itoi put down a sacrifice bunt in the eighth inning. It opened up the offense. They scored three runs, took the lead, and finally dispatched Brazil. But he knows what he has to do to spark this offense. Matsui, in his major league career, hit 267 with a 321 on base percentage. I wouldn't be surprised if they play hit and run now. Matsui can really handle a bat, and obviously seven years of big league experience, but it's already showing that he's shortened up. One one pitch and a move to first. Yeah, I think he's going to swing away. 
I think he's trying to convince Wilbur Perez that he's going to bunt, but don't be surprised if they start to run her and try to go first and third. Just get some movement on the infield. He squares. And he bunts. He pops it up. Wow, Matsui, known for handling the bat better than that. And he pops up a bunt. Chono is still at first. Yeah, the frustration is high in both dugouts already in this game, and we're just in the third inning. But the significance of being able to execute certainly going to play a bigger role as these two teams move through this tournament. How many managers, and we saw this with Victor Mesa, how many managers at the end of batting practice will run up the third baseline and make sure that his team is hustling off the field as Mesa did tonight trying to set the tone for tonight's game. This was as animated as we have seen Victor Mesa during batting practice tonight. He was standing around the cage talking to the hitters. Then he went out into the outfield and talked to some of the outfielders. And even after he encouraged everybody to run off the field, he came back for infield and hit fungos to the outfield. Well, these two teams are no strangers as far as international play. They have met, they've met in the World Baseball Classic. And a quick throw to first. Five and two is Japan against Cuba since 2006. Runner goes, pitches high, they throw it out a second, and it gets in the center field. It was not a bad throw. Jose Fernandez was late to the bag. Yeah, I sure was. That's a good call, Rich, because the second baseman was late. He had to try to catch the ball on the run, and that never works. Jono got a good jump at first. The throw is not that bad. It's right over the bag, but because Fernandez was late, he didn't pick up on the break at first, and he is trying to catch the ball as he's running across the bag, and they're fortunate that the center fielder backed it up. You can see Mason said, let's go, man. You got to get to the bag. You can't fault Sanchez the catcher for that throw. It was right on the money. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Breaking ball grounded to third. And Coriel fires it across the diamond in time. You know, I've got another, not a manager, to mix into a Victor Mesa profile. You went with Ozzy Gay Lupinello. I'd throw Bobby Knight in there right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just being around him and yeah. watching him, especially watching him during the game. He, he's not afraid to let anybody know how he feels. Yeah, and that's certainly the way Mesa is. And he told us, he said, I had a tough time convincing these players that this is going to be stiff competition in this tournament. Abe now. You can see Ariel Sanchez, the catcher, looking into the dugout. Abe got into one and darn near hit it out to finish the first. And a breaking ball misses down low. It looked like a breaking ball that stayed up out over the plate. And he just missed hitting a whole run. At 27 home runs last year in the regular season, and he's halfway up the wall in right, right center. And Abe again deep. Tomas is calling and he makes the catch. Boy, Abe's put a charge into a couple. Everyone can sit back down here in the Yahoo Dome. Scoreless. It's a scoreless ball game. It's the bottom of the third. Japan against Cuba. Now on the field. A lot going on off the field in the hidden bullpens here in Fukuoka. This is a story that's developing. Masahiro, Masahiro Tanaka. He was the starter in the opener for Japan. Did not throw well, and he is highly regarded as the number one pitcher here in Japan. You can see his line, two innings, four hits, and he really wasn't sharp. The majority of these Major League Scots that have been in attendance throughout all six games here in Fukuoka 
wanted to see Tanaka and they were mostly disappointed in his first outing. And you know Buck it wasn't just here in the World Baseball Classic but the exhibition games leading up to the World Baseball Classic was the same story as uh, Tomas stands in. Yasmani Tomas has come into both games as a pinch hitter. He delivered a couple of hits. His first A.B. in this one. He drives that one to left field. Hits it deep and gone. Wow. That's 20 rows up. That is impressive. And Cuba strikes first. Victor Mesa put him in the starting lineup. And that'll make your manager smile. Yasmani Tomas has had some good at bats in this tournament and Victor Mason said you know what I'm going to figure out how to get this team going. So he got the nod to start in right field tonight and what a swing this is. I mean that's a patented power stroke right there and he hits it nine miles way back in the seats in left. That was almost up into the Sadahara O Museum which is at the top of the stands in the outfield here in the dome. Pitch misses down low. It'd be kind of appropriate that Santa Clara O's museum would have a long home run slam up against the windows way back there. See that's where sometimes the, the language barrier can hurt broadcasters like us. Here's the 1 1 because normally doing a major league game after something like that happened we would during the break go to the other broadcasters and say hey has anyone ever hit a ball into the Sadahara O Museum. But something tells me Buck it might take us longer to get an answer. I think you're right. Tomas hit 16 home runs last year. And boy, that is a big time home run swing from Tomas and that's going to certainly allow Victor Mason to relax there you see the inside of that Sadahara O museum and it is a terrific museum high high pop up Matsui's calling for it and he makes the catch and he retires the catcher Ariel Sanchez he and I both had a great tour of the Santa Clara O Museum and it talks about his childhood where he learned how to play and he's of Chinese descent. It's kind of interesting. His parents group came to Tokyo and he worked in their restaurant as a kid. His father didn't want him to play baseball. He felt like he was going to get hurt if he played baseball. And he was a right handed hitter when he was a kid. That's a tough hop and it eats Matsuda alive. And Barbara Arrua Barruena is aboard. Yeah, I would say this is going to be an infield hit for the Cuban shortstop. And anytime you get an infield playing on an artificial surface and it's in between hitting on the dirt and the artificial surface, it's going to be a tough play. That had a lot of top spin and ate up the third baseman, Matsuda. So the cricket is aboard. El Grillo. A meeting on the mound, and indeed the score has just announced that is an infield base hit for Barbara Arue Barbueno. These guys might play hit and run right here now, just trying to catch the Japanese team on their heels. A long home run by Yasmani Tomas, and Cuba has a one nothing lead. Otanari over to first. Otanari started to lean a little bit toward first base before he made that pickoff throw. Gonna have to be a little more careful and not move before he steps toward first. Misses away and it's one and oh this Cuban team has some speed but they don't have a lot of guys with big stolen base numbers the style of play in Cuba right now is long ball. It's uh, Ioannis Cespedes, baby. Yeah, and even though Victor Mesa was a great base stealer in his playing days, he knows he can't ask guys to run if you don't have base stealers on your team. But we have seen these guys hit for 
four days now and they can really swing the bats and they like the hit they're all about the long ball that's for sure. Yeah that's one of the things that uh, Abe told us is just how athletic and how strong these guys are. Ground ball short. Sakamoto got one there. Matsui's turn is not in time. And Heredia is aboarded first. Arua Barrowena is erased at second. Hey, after Sakamoto, the shortstop's got a lot of range. And what an athletic play he makes here going deep into the hole. Fires off balance right on the money to Matsui, who makes the turn, but they don't have a chance at two. But what an athletic play by Sakamoto. He's just 24 years old, pretty good looking shortstop. And when we were talking about the old pool team, we're talking about Sakamoto being one of the guys that everybody feels has got a chance to be a big leaguer. Yulieski Goriel, 39 pitches so far for Kenji Otanari. And Otanari misses down low. And we showed you Masahiro Tanaka warming up. As the inning started Tanaka a guy that Japan wants to get into this game for an inning maybe two just to try to get him straightened out before play starts on Friday in Tokyo. Runner goes and a little roller to third Matsuda handles this one and fires across in time Cuba is on the board boy are they ever on the board watch where this thing lands. Yasmani Tomas, 20 rows in. Final night in Fukuoka, both Japan and Cuba are advancing to Tokyo. And the stakes aren't all that high, but you wouldn't know it from the intensity in the building and in both dugouts. Yonder Guevara comes out for Cuba. Guevara is 27 years old. This is his first action in WBC play. This is the debut for him on an international stage as he joins the Cuban national team for the first time in his career. Wilbur Perez went the first three. Breaking ball to Hayata Sakamoto, the shortstop for Samurai Japan. Now, Victor Mesa, the manager, was intense. We had a chance to talk with Koji Yamamoto as well before the ball game. And there's a saying in the United States for any type of sport, you can't turn it on and off. And that's exactly what he lectured us on in how he was going to approach this ball game headed towards Tokyo. Yeah, and they have been challenged offensively. And you know what they won their games against Brazil and against China but they only scored five runs. One two pitch all right down the middle. That's a sweet fastball. And Sakamoto struggling in this series is just one for ten. All right upcoming schedule. You want World Baseball Classic you got World Baseball Classic on Thursday Italy and Mexico open up Pool D Venezuela and Dominican Republic in Pool C on Friday. You've got Cuba and the Netherlands or of course you know, might just be Chinese Taipei there Japan and Netherlands or Chinese Taipei will meet Canada and Italy lined up to go. That's over in Pool D here's the rest of Friday yeah. Spain and Puerto Rico Mexico USA check your local listings for the exact time in your region. Sean Hill will go to the mound for Canada against Italy. Ernie Witt, the Canadian manager, is going to use two starters in each of their three games. He feels like he can keep their starters under 50 pitches. He's going to piggyback starters. Jamison Tyone, the number two overall pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates a couple of years ago, is going to pitch for Canada against Team USA in their tournament finale. Great honor for a young pitcher. Well, Ernie Witt knows the rules in that. That 50 pitch count is a magic number because for a pitcher who throws more than 50 pitches, 
He has to wait a minimum of four days before he pitches again in the tournament. It's interesting all of those teams in that pool. Mexico Italy USA and Canada will all play three games in a row. So they don't have the luxury of being able to utilize the pitch count and take advantage of an off day once they start play. They will play three consecutive games so pitch counts are real issue. And for Koji Yamamoto and for Victor Mesa when they get to Tokyo the pitch count is lifted from 65 to 80. The maximum amount of pitches a pitcher can throw and obviously the focus is on the starters with that 2 2. Up the middle El Grillo has it and he rifles one across the diamond in time. If you're wondering about some of the talent in the rest of the pools how about what the Dominican Republic did to the Phillies and Cole Hamels in an exhibition game they scored 15 runs on 28 hits and they are absolutely loaded. Jose Reyes Hanley Ramirez Edwin Encarnacion Miguel Tejada Nelson Cruz. They have talent offensively they have Fernando Rodney who had one of the best seasons for a closer in the last several years. Edson Volquez started for San Diego and they are loaded. Santiago Casilla is on that team as well. The veteran Octavio Dotel. So the Dominican Republic embarrassed last time at the hands of the Netherlands. Certainly doesn't want to have a repeat of that performance in 2009. Yeah, but the problem they've got is they've got both Puerto Rico and Venezuela in the same pool. Reyes, Robinson Cano, and Hanley Ramirez each homer in that wipeout of uh, Cole Hamels and the Phillies. Four hits apiece for Miguel Tejada and Ramirez. Tony Pena had a very comfortable day. And some of these players, like uh, Miguel Tejada, you know, they're trying to impress other teams. Tejada, I believe, is with Kansas City right now, trying to get a Major League roster spot. We mentioned Chen Ming Wong, who will be in Tokyo and pitch for Chinese Taipei as a free agent, coming off a great start in his first appearance. Show Nakata is up. He singled back in the second. Cuba one nothing lead. A long home run by Yasmani Tomas, the only run in this one. And this right-hander, Yander Guevara, who has a little whip in him on that fastball, he has looked pretty good. The count's two and two. Big home run by Yomani Tomas, the only run of this ball game, and I mean big home run, not only because it was the only run of the game, but because he hit it nine miles to left. He's played his way into the starting lineup, and I would expect he's going to stay there for a while. Up the middle, and that gets by Arrua Rueda. Arrua Barbuena is. A very good shortstop, but it looks like he gets fooled. He kind of expected this ball to come up. You can see he doesn't keep his glove down. It tipped off the end of his glove and sneaks into center field. I would love to hear Harry Carey call a game with Barbaro Arua. <laughs> Arua Barbuena, or even Will Farrell. Yeah. It would be a good one. Certainly we know, and there's. Vietnam had a long conversation with that Sonoria Nava before the game, right after he hit, and he's a big man. He's had a tremendous career. He's amassed over 2,000 career hits and he's 40 years old and we ask him about his career how long he intends to play he said I'm going to play as long as I can kind of take it year by year because I love being around these young players. Hammers that one into right field that brings the crowd to life around second and holding at second. Nakata and the Anaba shake works. And Anaba on the off day yesterday took about 20 minutes of extra BP. 
I told him today, I said, boy, your stroke looks good. He says, yeah, but I don't have any results. He gets results here. He gets that high breaking ball, that hit me slider that spins up and out over the plate, and he drills it into right. And in Nava, one of the grand uh, old men in the Japanese league, and the ball that gets under El Grillo's glove is costly because Japan is now. And first and second, though there are two outs. Victor Mesa just sent his pitching coach out to talk to Yonder Guevara. Yeah, and if you think that neither one of these teams put too much stock in the outcome of this game, you're sadly mistaken. We have seen pitching changes already. We have seen several visits to the mound, and the intensity in the bats is quite evident. Matsuda 0 for 1 tonight, 3 for 7 in the classic. Japan with runners first and second. Matsuda was up in a similar spot in the second inning, and this time it was Wilbur Perez on the mound, and Perez struck him out. Yeah, he elevated the fastball. He had used the breaking ball earlier in the at bat and had Matsuda thinking downstairs, and then he surprised him when he went up the ladder and got the punch out. Japanese crowd and we've seen it now this is the third time we've seen it whenever Japan plays there's, there's a band out there in right field and every time Japan hits they strike up the band and the fans stand on their feet throughout the entire inning. One pitch coming. And it's a good one right down the middle. Japan coming into this game, six for 18 with runners in scoring position, but tonight they're 0 for 4. Good fastball right at the knees on the outside corner. And again, Matsuda finds himself in a deep hole. Runners aboard, Nakata's at second, Inaba's at first. Guevara's one two. Hung it and got away with it because Matsuda punished it down the left field line. Yeah, they made a mistake right there and they were able to get away from it. Ariel Sanchez, the catcher, comes out as a little chat with Guevara. They're trying to get this ball away, and look where it is. Inner half, and they're fortunate that Matsuda got out in front of it and hooked it foul. That could have been two runs. They're playing the outfield opposite. So you don't want to pitch against your defense. And Sanchez went out and had a chat with his pitchers to remind him, hey, we've got to get the ball away from this hitter. See what he gets one and two. Another breaking ball. This one got in on his hands. And twice now, Matsuda has struck out with two men on. Cuba hanging on to a one nothing lead. It's a one nothing ball game right now. Yosmani Tomas with a long home run, the only run of the ball game. Japan has come close a couple of times. Shinosuke Abe. Has gone deep. That was in the first inning. This is the Tomas home run. Look where that thing ends up. Twice Japan has had a couple runners on, and twice Overhero Matsuda.
Matsuda has gone down swinging in the number nine spot. And that's how we've arrived at 1 0 in the bottom of the fourth. Rich Waltz along with Buck Martina. You can see the starter for Japan gave up just two hits, the only run. Kenji Otanari, three innings, two hits. Perez did a good job over Perez, a little shaky in the first inning, but boy, did he settle down. And now the new pitcher, Masahiro Tanaka, who started game one for Japan. And that's a that's a story all in it of itself in the fact that he's in this ball game right now. Yeah, 24 years old, and he was the Samura Award winner in 2011, the Japanese equivalent of the Cy Young Award. He's a two-time Gold Glover. And he was shaky in his first outing, so Kenji Yamamoto, the manager, wants to give him a chance to see if he can't sort things out here tonight. Kind of tough when you're struggling to have to face a potent lineup like Cuban and get things sorted out. Well, every lineup he's going to face, he needs to get it sorted out. You can see him rubbing up the baseballs. That's a story. For many of the teams uh, competing in the World Baseball Classic, those that use the Mizuno baseball in international competition, smacked into center field. That's a base hit. Boy, Fernandez drilled that ball. Cuba uses that baseball. Japan uses that baseball not only in international competition, they use it in the Japanese Professional League. It's been their official ball for the last two years, but the ball in the World Baseball Classic is up to major league standards. It's the Rawlings baseball. And it's a little bit slicker and slightly bigger. And Japanese pitchers have complained that they're having a tough time getting used to it. Hirokazu Sawamura starts to loosen up for Japan. As much as Yamamoto would like to see Tanaka get straightened out, he's not going to allow Cuba to just hack away at him. He's going to try to keep it respectable here. Well, right now they're tetting their hacks. That one's in the gap. It's going to go to the wall, and Fernandez is racing for third. Up with the ball is Chono. Here comes Fernandez. Here comes a throw, and he scores. It's 2 0. Frederick Cepeda, his second double of the Classic. Cepeda had a triple in the Classic. That's his fifth hit in three games, and he's starting to heat up. His first at bat as a right handed hitter against the left hander. He flew out to right. And this one is drilled all the way to the base of the wall in right center. It chases home Fernandez all the way from first. This part of the lineup has done major damage in this tournament. Now, the implications here with Tanaka pitching and so far not pitching well are pretty substantial. First for Japan. As they move on to Tokyo, would they trust him with a start at this point? That's really in question. Yeah, it sure is. And Koji Yamamoto has given us every indication that he's not going to be impressed by reputation. He's going to go by what he sees. And right now, Tanaka is not fooling anybody. There is Jose Abreu. Abreu squares, and I think almost in disbelief. Tanaka spins towards second just to see if he was bluffing. Breu struck out back in the second here. Now, the this grand slam a, against China. Excuse me, Rich. This would be a huge statement if Mesa asked Abreu to bunt. I don't think he's going to. <laughs> you could see the puzzled yeah. look on uh, Yamamoto's face. Like, are you kidding me? He is bunting. I mean, that's a, a little bit too much. Here's the guy you're going to lean on throughout the rest of this tournament. He drove in five in his last game against Cuba. But Victor Mason trying to send a message to his players that, hey, we're not there yet. We want to get to San Francisco. We want to win this thing, and team play is going to be important. And I think all of you sabermatician mathematicians that don't like the bunt, and there, there's a, a lot of folks in, in baseball that, that don't, and with good reason. I think you're right. I think what we've seen for Victor Mesa when he has bunted hasn't been strategy. It's been send a message. It's been hey everybody pay attention. I don't care who you are. You better start taking this seriously. He told us before game one that was one of the things that he wasn't sure if he had done yet and that was get the attention of his team 
going into this first round. So when you ask a, an Abreu or a, a Cepeda or a Despain to bunt, those are all big home run hitters, guys that are among the home run leaders in the uh, Series Nationale in Cuba. Yeah, and I think Mesa just has to have Abreu swing the bat. I mean, he's the guy that's going to be the power guy. He's going to protect Zepeda. And Zepeda is a switch hitter who hits ahead of Abreu. And Abreu is really starting to come around with the timing. Counts one and two. Tanaka to the plate. Fastball got him. 94 miles an hour. That's as good a fastball as we've seen out of Tanaka. Boy, there's a lot of gamesmanship going on in this game, trying to set up the potential matchup in Tokyo. Umbrea was looking breaking ball, and Tanaka, there was a heater. Good spot, inner part of the plate about knee high, and he locks up Abreu. It looked like that first bunt attempt for Abreu took him out of the rest of the at bat. Here's the powerfully built Alfredo de Spain, and he swings and misses. Good splitter right there as Abeda has to scramble back to get the second. And de Spain is very vulnerable to off speed pitches. I mean, he is thinking dead red all the time. He's geared up for that fastball. And if you can get breaking ball splitter to him, a strike to ball splitter will normally get a swing and a miss from de Spain. Broken bat, but a line drive into left, picked up by Nakata. Runner holds, and Nakata with a strong throw to the cutoff man. How strong is Alfredo de Spain? Well, his nickname is Caballo de los Caballos, Horse of the Horses. Yeah, and he used that strength to fight off this fastball. I'm a little surprised Abe used the fastball. That was just a little bit down from the sweet spot. The bat splits in two and he drills it into the left field. He is a strong man with a long swing. They gave, gave him a fastball and he cashed in. Well, the concerned look by skipper Koji Yamamoto and Shinosuke Abe out there trying to get Tanaka through this. Yeah, they need Tanaka to get turned around and we take a look at. The home run by Yosmani Tomas to lead off the third inning, and it was a home run in capital letters, all the way deep into the seats in deep left center. So the pitching coach was out, possibly to talk about how they're going to attack Tomas. I know one thing: he can hit a fastball. Now right now Tanaka has been knocked around a bit and his breaking ball misses down low. If you're just joining us that man is the ace of Japan's staff but he did not pitch well in game one he's not pitched well in exhibition play and there's real concern that he might not be in the rotation come Tokyo. Yeah they have a big number of starters on their roster. They really went with a starter heavy makeup in their pitching staff. So they've got plenty of innings, but this is the guy they thought would be the leader in this pitching staff. It looked like a little spinning slider that had to a mouse out in front. You know, the other implication of his struggles, there are, what, 60 scouts here watching this week's play here in Fukuoka. One one pitch a swing and a miss many people have written or said or thought that Tanaka is the next you Darvish that he's the next big arm to come out of Japan and so the scouts are here they want to see and he's struggling right now ahead well, in the count one and two we mentioned 2011 and that's when you Darvish had his final season here in Japan Tanaka out pitched him and won the Sabomura Award. So now, of course, with Darvish and his success in the big leagues, all the major league scouts are taking a serious look at Tanaka. Off speed pitch, and he gets him. A big strikeout for Tanaka. 
Looks like a splitter, and it really has late life as it's about knee high, and just before it gets to the hitting zone, it disappears. Well, that's a huge strikeout. Two strikeouts in the inning for Tanaka. Of course, Buck, I guess for scouts, it's a chance for them to see what he looks like under adversity. Yeah, and he's certainly up against a tough lineup. Now he's got Ariel Sanchez, the number eight hitter, the catcher. We had mentioned that Abe, the catcher for Japan, was using this game as kind of a scatter report, his own personal opportunity to size up the Cuban hitters. And he is really taking note of what they want to do. Look how he's keeping an eye on Sanchez as he gives the sign to Tanaka. Abe told us right before the game, he said, we haven't seen Cuba. We haven't played them on ourselves. So tonight, I'm going to do a lot of things to see if I can't get a gauge on how to pitch these guys. Well, it counts one and one to Ariel Sanchez. Cuba has another run here in the fourth against Tanaka. A ringing double by Frederick Cepeda chased home Jose Fernandez. Cubans at the corners. 1 1. Foul back to the screen, and now Tanaka is looking a little bit more like himself. Yeah, and you can bet his confidence is rattled a bit. Leading up to this tournament, you'd mentioned the fact he'd struggled in the exhibition games, and then he got his first start. Didn't look good at all in that game. He went a couple of innings, and they had hoped that he would come out and throw the ball much better. Two innings, four hits. He allowed a run, it was unearned. But he didn't have a strikeout. One two pitch coming. And he got him. Masahiro Tanaka out of the bullpen gives up a run but strikes out three. Cuba up to nothing. Cuba's got a two nothing lead. We are in the fifth. We are in Fukuoka. We see a lot of things that we don't normally see in the States. But the field seats and you can see that young fan right there. He's got a helmet and the helmet comes in the box in front of his seat that is underneath the seat when the fans come to the ballpark. Not only do they get a helmet but they get a glove. So if you're going to sit down there in harm's way close to those hot shot foul balls that go into the seats every seat has a box underneath it with a helmet and a glove. But you don't get to take them home. No, they just leave them for the next fan that comes to the game, and it's a great idea. And obviously, those balls are rocketed into those seats right down there on field level. He's a Yoshi Chono, top of the order for Japan, Kaz Matsui, and then Ibata. Low fastball from Yonder Guevara Guevara into his second inning in relief three innings from Wilbur Perez three scoreless innings Guevara stranded a couple of runners in the fourth breaking ball fouled at the plate we told you at the outset of the telecast those around team Japan are concerned about offense. Even the band is concerned about offense. I think anybody that follows the team and reads the papers as the team advances on to Tokyo, wondering if little ball and pitching is enough to get them to San Francisco. Yeah, and as this tournament continues, the level of competition will increase dramatically. You have to have the bats come around a little bit. The quality of pitching you're going to face is only going to get better. And there are some concerned hitters in that Japanese dugout. And the fans, of course, of Team Japan, anxious for the pool to begin round two in Tokyo on Friday. Doubleheader on Friday. We'll be there with all the action. I think the band will travel, too. Here's the one-two. 
it's foul back to the screen. Oh yeah, they'll probably take the bullet train up to Tokyo and be there for the double header on Friday. It is a five hour bullet train or a two hour flight from Fukuoka back up to Tokyo. Temperatures in Tokyo happy to report are supposed to warm up through the weekend and into early next week. Rivera with a good breaking ball and Chono goes down swinging for the second time tonight. Rivera picks up his third strikeout since coming into the ball game. He's got kind of a sidearm delivery in that sweeping breaking ball. Starts in the strike zone, breaks dramatically down and away from Chono. He strikes out for a second time tonight. You can see him talking to Nabata, who is on deck. Takashi Tortani, who started at second base in game one against Brazil, will come on as a pinch hitter. And Matt for Kaz Matsui. Well, they pulled the plug quickly on Matsui. Remember, Matsui struck out and failed to get a sacrifice down in the third. Well, the one thing Koji Yamaura, the okay. Japanese manager, has no allegiances. He hasn't managed for five years, and he's got a lot at stake. Japan has won the previous two. World Baseball Classics. They're thinking of making it three in a row and really dominate this tournament. So Yamamoto is looking for a hot bat. Popped him up, shallow right. Fernandez out. In comes Tomas. And it's Fernandez who makes the catch. Pool A and B. The top two are headed. To Tokyo. Here are the storylines. Are Japan's All Stars enough? Remember, there are no Major League Japanese players on Team Japan. Opportunity knocks. Korea has been knocked out, and all of a sudden, a team like the Netherlands is no longer Cinderella. And of course, you got Cuba's power play. We've seen it in their last two ball games. And they've hit the only three home runs in this pool. They've hit three of them: two last night, one tonight, and excuse me, two. On Monday night and one tonight. So they are obviously the most powerful team in this pool. The Netherlands has several major leaguers on their roster, and Andrew Jones, who will play here in Japan this summer, is the DH for the Netherlands. Plus, they've got the confidence of advancing out of that first pool and the fact that they advanced in 2009 as well. They made it out of the first round. Breaking ball for a strike to Ibata, who has a single and has bounced out. Things are much more calm in those, those seats. The outfield seat, that's where the action is between the foul poles. There's just a wild mosh pit of fans out there. Well, it's not unlike ballparks in the States, and certainly Yankee Stadium comes to the mind with the bleacher creatures out in right. They go through the roll call at the start of every Yankee home game, calling out the names of the defensive players, the Yankees, as they start the ball game. I don't think there's as much heckling here <laughs> as there is in, in, a, in a place like Yankee Stadium or any major league stadium for that matter. But there's a, there's there's so much life out there. Well, I can't wait to get to Tokyo. You know it's going to be even more intense there. Bigger ballpark and certainly a bigger city, obviously. Games in in Taichung were. Uh, well attended and especially the games with Chinese Taipei a lot of enthusiasm will be interested to see if the fans from Chinese Taipei travel. Breaking ball misses away. Pavar loves to throw that. Sweeping breaking ball to right handed hitters that's what he got Chono on it. Remember when Chono walked back to the dugout, he stopped and told Ibata, hey, lay off that pitch. It's not a strike. It looks like it's going to be in the zone, but you've got to be very patient. Try to recognize early as it 
comes out of the Rivera's hand that it's going to be off the plate. Well, the home plate umpire, Jerry Davis, wasn't calling that a strike. The whole everybody else out on the field thought it was a strike. Ariel Sanchez, the catcher, was headed towards the dugout. Yonder Guevara was, and now Victor Mesa comes out. Now Mesa, whether he wants to talk to Guevara, whether he wants to talk to Jerry Davis, not quite sure. Victor Mesa is very animated. He's talking to Guevara and saying, listen, just focus on throwing strikes. Don't pitch an ump. Certainly the Cubans are very animated. They have a lot of emotion, as we've seen from the manager. Watch the catcher and the pitcher after this breaking ball. Guevara walks toward the mound. The catcher's on his way to the mound. They anticipate strike three. Jerry Davis said, hey, boys, wait a minute. I'll do the up in here. You guys pitch, you catch, and I'll take care of the strike zone. Victor Mesa may have reminded Guevara, hey, look, don't do that because Jerry Davis is going to be umpiring the games in Tokyo. Guevara's aboard, and here comes Abe. And Abe twice has hit it hard. He hit it to the wall. That was back with a runner on in the first, and they hit it just shy of the warning track. This one, a diving stop by Fernandez, and on his knees, he throws out Abe. And once again, Japan with a base runner. You gotta love it. Tip the cap. Two nothing ball game with Cuba on top of Japan. Takahashi Toritani stays in the ball game for Japan. As Cuba comes up in the bottom of the fifth, this copyrighted telecast presented by the authority, the World Baseball Classic Incorporated, may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without expressed written consent. El Grillo, the cricket, is up. And the Cuban shortstop swings and misses. Carrue Baru Buena had an infield hit back in the third inning. Hit the ball to third base and handcuffed Matt Suda. Hit on that sliding bit and had some top spin and it clanked off the third baseman's glove. That name has got to weigh like two pounds. Carrue Baruena. I think it's Spanish for Gruzalonic. Salta Lamacchia, the longest name in Major League Baseball history. So we're going to miss. And Arrua Barruena strikes out. Masahiro Tanaka is getting things sorted out. This is a pretty good breaking ball. Tight spin. You could see the little dot on that baseball as it went toward the hitter. That's four strikeouts now. Shaky start. He gave up a single and an RBI double to the first two batters he faced. And now he has struck out four of the last five. He's got the full complement of pitches. He'll pitch in the low 90s with his fastball. There's a curveball, slider, a split, and a changeup. When we had our meeting with the Japanese manager, Koji Yamamoto, we asked him to give us a scouting report on Tanaki. He said he throws a fastball, a slider, and many, many others. <laughs> it's not unlike Daisuke Matsuzaka, who was the MVP of this tournament in the first two go arounds. Matsuzaka has a wide variety of pitches as well. Well, this is a completely different guy than we saw in game one. He just blew that one up there at 94. Yeah, and Tanaka now with four straight strikeouts has found his rhythm. Boy, he's getting in on the kitchen of these Cuban hitters.
Pitch in the dirt. And the counts two and two. Jaime is now going to go out to the mound and talk to Tanaka and see if they can't finish off this at bat. Jaime is getting his first up close look at these Cuban hitters and now as he makes his way through the lineup for the third time he's got a little bit better idea what he wants to do to try to neutralize these potent bats. Already in the leadoff spot is 0 for 2. And breaking ball pounded foul. So Tanaka the second to work Kenji Otanari was the starting pitcher and I think certainly if you're uh, Koji Yamamoto watching the first two hitters against Tanaka you're thinking to yourself maybe it's not such a good idea to start him in Tokyo but now seeing this all of a sudden it's going to give him some confidence. Got another strikeout. This is a breaking ball for the strikeout. Now that's four in a row for Tanaka. And it looks like he's really starting to get feel for this baseball. That's a tight breaking slider down and away to Heredia and another strikeout. That's five for Tanaka, who ended the game in the fourth. Tell you what, Tanaka really impressing the scouts here right now. Yulieski Goriel at the plate. One scout in particular that has to be pretty impressed is Craig Shipley, who is here. Shipley was with the Boston Red Sox and was a big part of bringing Daisuke Matsuzaka to the United States. And so here is Shipley now a special assistant to Kevin Towers with the Arizona Diamondbacks and he's watching maybe the next big arm to come from Japan to Major League Baseball. Well and the one thing too you can see how focused all the scouts are now that Tanaka has found it. Craig Shipley has been a long time scout the Pacific Rim and he did a great job for Boston and now he is with Arizona. And with all the dearth of pitching in the major leagues and the success of you Darvish last year major league scouts have gathered here to watch Tanaka. He recently signed a three year contract but he has an out in the contract after this season. That's impressive. He strikes out the side. He has struck out six of the last seven he has faced. Masahiro Tanaka is back. Still, it's 2 0 Cuba. It's 2 0 Cuba on top of Japan. Welcome back to Fukuoka. Rich Waltz along with Buck Martinez. A look at the Team Japan dugout. The team's a little bit of a break here halfway through. When they come out and uh, groom the field, they, here in Japan, the teams don't take the field. They'll wait for a, a spell. The crowd has been lively. The game has been fun to watch. It's been a uh, hotly contested ball game. The stakes aren't all that high. There is some seeding involved. Both teams will play on Friday. There are two games scheduled in Tokyo. And of course Chinese Taipei and the Netherlands awaits and one of the things we've been able to see is a, a revival of Masahiro Tanaka. He gets Abreu with a fastball then Tomas strikes out Sanchez chases the split the breaking ball works down and away. He gets her ready to chase the slider and another slider gets Guria six strikeouts in two innings of work and that's exactly what Koji Yamamoto the Japanese manager wanted to do with Tanaka. Get him back in the groove, give him some confidence that he can take with him to Tokyo for round two. There's Tanaka's line 34 pitches. The 34 pitches is important because he didn't want to get him over 50. He would have lost him for four days in the tournament. And so 
two innings and six strikeouts and as we pointed out he struck out six of the last seven he faced now that's all well and good but for coach Yamamoto he's still got to be concerned Buck his ball club has not looked like a, an offensive juggernaut in this one and they're scoreless here. Yeah and they're not facing the top line pitching of Cuba. They're facing that second tier of pitching and that's a concern for Yamamoto. He wants to see these hitters get something going and they're going to ask Ayano Sakamoto to get things started. He's the number five hitter tonight. They have moved him around in the order and Japan's just trying to figure out what combination, what lineup is going to click to get them going. He's one for ten in the classic. And he misses a breaking ball. Well, the pitching that both Japan and Cuba are going to face when the Netherlands and Chinese Taipei join them in Tokyo is going to get better. We had mentioned Chen Meng Wong pitching for Chinese Taipei. Yigamar Markwell, a former minor leaguer that started in the Blue Jays system, will pitch for the Netherlands, and he had a good outing in Taichung. Gavora catches the corner. Sakamoto, Yoshio Itoi, and Sho Nakata. Japan, of course, has won both of the World Baseball Classics, 06, 09. They will not have that familiar companion, Korea. Korea not getting out of Pool B. Yeah, and we watched Shinosuke Abe, the catcher, how surprised he was about Korea. He said, I was really surprised. There's a look at the Japanese bullpen, Hirokazu Sawamura. He's up for a second time. He is look ready. He is just trying to stay loose and he may be the next pitcher coming in as Tanaka looks to have sorted things out. Yeah Abe told us don't take anybody lightly in this tournament and he kind of intimated that uh, in their ball game against Brazil and even the ball game against China he felt that uh, Japan wasn't ready didn't play that well. Guevara knocks it down and flips to first. He gets the first out of the sixth inning. Sakamoto is 0 for 3. That was a nice play by the pitcher, Yander Guevara. That ball had a chance to get through the infield and start the inning with a base hit. Take a look at the balance of the pitcher. He's got a nice balance. Ball is hit to his glove side, knocks it down calmly, reaches down, picks it up, and goes to first for the out. Here is a toy singled in the second and bounced to short. He has been Japan's best hitter in the classic. He's got four hits and nine at bats. And he's got his own cheer out there. It's the Japanese version of a walk up song. And it lasts the entire night. It does in the States players uh, get to pick their walk up song at least most do. Well they're passionate fans and we saw them milling around the ballpark before the gates open. And it's just like a ballpark in the States souvenir stands all around the stadium on the outside and fans getting their picture with Google Dome in the background and uh, it was a great atmosphere. Beautiful day this afternoon, very spring like day, and a lot of fans got a chance to come to the ballpark early. Lined foul, and it's one and two. This ballpark is the home of the SoftBank Hawks and their team that's really starting to spend some money. We saw their import players during the exhibition season Willie Mo Pena, Brian LaHare. 
Vicente Padilla. Vicente Padilla, the pitcher. Count is one and two to a toy. All right, Buck, if you could take one thing from what you've seen here at Japanese baseball and transplant it to the major leagues, what would it be? The work ethic of the players. The way that they come out and put time in, the fundamentals are preached every single day. They are dedicated to the routines of repetition. And I think that's the one thing that if the major league players would put that time in, and obviously the length of the season has got a lot to do with why they don't. But you can imagine how sound the game would be if the routine that we see in Japan was carried into Major League Baseball. The one thing I would change, I would love to see Japan's batting practice routine put into Major League Baseball. We watch Team Japan take batting practice. They have a catcher for BP. They have a pitcher that's throwing mid 80s. And it's full speed batting practice. It's it's not batting practice fastballs. Yeah. And there's no fooling around. It certainly gets you close to game speed. Three two. When I first broke into the major leagues in 1969 with the Kansas City Royals, starting pitchers threw batting practice in between starts. They would get their work in on the mound and throw to their own hitters. They'd have a catcher, of course, and they would throw all their pitches, and it was pretty good for both the hitters and the pitchers. Yeah, I, I could see Steven Strasburg doing that. Yeah. And Zimmerman would really like to take a lot of BP against Steven Strasburg on a regular basis, wouldn't he? Or any starting pitcher, <laughs> for that matter. That breaking ball misses outside, and then Toy is on his way down to first. You know, one of the fascinating things, and we may not get to finish this story. Heck, let's not even start it because Victor Mesa is on his way out to the mound. It's a long walk. The dugouts are as far away from the diamond as you'll see in this dome. Obviously, a multi purpose facility. So, multi purpose. Did you know, Buck Martinez, that this was the site of Frank Sinatra's last public concert? What year was that? 94, uh, I think. I'm guessing at that one. The Ostani Castillo into the ball game for Cuba. 25 years old, he is from Via Clara, Cuba. Victor Mesa was the Via Clara manager for a number of years and had several seasons of 50 wins while managing for Via Clara. Sho Nakata at the plate. Big lead by Toy at first. And he draws the throw. They have added Nakata in the open because he's the key guy to this offense. One of the guys they need to start swinging the bat with some authority. In 24 home runs last season. And he needs to start driving the ball a little bit to give them a little pop in their order. Between he and Abe, they hit 51 home runs last year, and they've got to start showing that power. Victor Mesa made the pitching change, and when the pitcher Castillo came into the game, he was talking about the next batter. Watch, he says, "Listen, Nakata steps in the bucket. I want you to throw him a lot of breaking pitches away, pitch him away. We'll play the outfield away, and go get him." Just like that. And there's the breaking ball away. Unfortunately, Castillo, it misses, counts 2 0. Yeah, Victor Mace is going to have a short leash with all of his pitchers tonight. 
have some pitchers that need to work and he hasn't used many pitchers in the first two games of this series. And he doesn't want Japan to gather any momentum and come back in this game and carry it into the second round in Tokyo. In. It's three and zero. Oh. It's a pacing. You can see on the TV screens that the bullpen is busy. The bullpen is back behind the dugout, and you got a right-hander, you got a left-hander, and you got a strike from Castillo. So Nakata. Who has swung the bat well? The error in the fourth was a sharply hit ball up the middle that was misplayed by El Grillo, the shortstop. Yeah, the runner at first is not the concern for Castilla. He should focus in on the hitter. It represents a tying run, and I don't think it toys. Going to be running in this situation. The Cubans have spent a lot of time worrying about runners in this game. So you kind of get a sense of what concerns Cuba about Japan. They're aware and afraid that Japan is going to run, hit and run, go station to station. Chopper. Well, and I think too that Victor Mesa is concerned that if Tanaka can turn things around as he appears to have done here tonight, the real strength of the Japanese team is their ability to shut down Cuba's bats. Well, there's no question that if, if Japan's going to get to San Francisco, they have to outpitch some folks in Tokyo. Because they're going to have a hard time outscoring people. Now it's three and two. The runner does go, up and it's in the right field. That's a base hit. And Toy is on his way to third, and Nakata continues to swing a solid bat. Show Nakata is showing up. Hit and run. They start to run her with a three-two count, one out. So now Japan first and third. This is a beautiful piece of hitting. The ball is up and out over the plate. Nakata not trying to do too much. Drives it through the hole at second. The second baseman had coverage. And now Mesa has made his way back out to the mound. And he's going to reach out and take that ball quickly. He doesn't fool around, and he, he's on his pitcher. He's on his catcher. Yeah, he took him right out of the ball game. We mentioned he had double barrel action ready in his bullpen. So Castillo is out, left-hander in. Just like that, still two nothing Cuba. Well, here's where it gets good. You've got Alberto Gonzalez coming out of the bullpen, the fourth. Cuban pitcher to work the third Cuban pitcher to work here this inning. That's a now he needs a hit. He's one for two so far tonight. Got a sharp single in the right his last time up. But we'd mentioned he's a real key to this offense as well. He is about to come around. Had an extended session of extra BP on the off day yesterday. And he knows that he's got to deliver. And of course, in his hometown where he plays his professional ball in Sapporo, when he comes up, the Inaba Shake breaks out. And the fans here in Fukuoka Carrying on the tradition. So here's Anaba, lefty against lefty. 
We asked the Nama when that Nama shake began. He said 2007. Fans in Sapporo. Where he started to do that with every one of his events. That's outside. This is the greatest walk up song ever. Swings and misses, and it's two and one. Now, Inaba in this one has hit the ball hard twice. He's lined out and he's singled. As Buck said, he took some extra batting practice. That's outside, and it's three and one. Good at bats lead to results. And Inaba is starting to see the ball well. He identified that pitch off the plate early out of the hand of Gonzalez. Ground ball back to the mound. Gonzalez gets one and El Clio turns it. And Japan still is without a run. Roberto Gonzalez gets a double play. No more shaking for Inaba. 2 0 ball game. You could see the uh, concern from Koji Yamamoto, Japanese manager, and here's some of the reasons why. This a long home run by Ismani Tomas. That came in the third inning. That gave Cuba a 1 0 lead. Masahiro Tanaka struggled early, then all of a sudden sharpened up and struck out six of the last seven he faced. And this, the last double play to end the sixth inning. Noberto Gonzalez started it, El Grillo turned it. And Japan has had numerous opportunities, but still has not scored a run. It's the bottom of the sixth, it's 2 0. Cuba's on top, and Hirokazu Sawamura, who throws hard. In fact, when we saw him earlier in the tournament, he was uh, very, very sharp. Sabamura pitched in game three against China. Came in the eighth inning and struck out to side, and he's got the best fastball we had seen to that point. But I think Tanaka found his fastball tonight, but Sabamura will throw it 93, 94 miles an hour. We haven't seen a wide assortment of secondary pitches, but he's got a good hitter. Jose Fernandez gets into one and he hammers it in the gap in right center field. A big hop up to get it is Chono, but by the time it arrives back in the infield, Fernandez is already at second base. Fernandez has had a nice classic so far. Five hits. In eight at bats, he has scored five runs already for Cuba. He scored four runs last night in the game against China, and he didn't waste any time. He got that high fastball and rips it into center field. Lead off double in the sixth. So do you think that Masahiro Tanaka has earned a start? As funny as it sounds, because he was the ace going into the start of the classic. You think those last two innings gives him a a start in Tokyo? Yes, I sure do. He was so dominant, racking up six strikeouts, didn't walk a batter. I think that Japanese manager Koji Yamamoto has to be impressed with the way he turned things around so dramatically here tonight. It's a pitching staff that is stocked with starting pitching, so he's got a lot of options. Frederick Cepeda, Tanaka threw 34 pitches. Sepeda so turns on one. Picked up there by Inaba, and he gets to first in time. Sepeda so moves the runner up. And so now Fernandez is at third, and let's see if Cuba can get the runner home. And here is Jose Abreu, one of the sluggers for Cuba, but he's had an odd night tonight. He looks silly against the left hander, Otanari, striking out. And then in the fourth, with a runner at second and nobody out, he was actually trying to bunt early, looked very uncomfortable trying to do it. 
and then proceeded to look at strike three. Pinch runner Rivera comes off the bench from Cuba to run at third base for Fernandez. Infield is drawn in. And the RBI guy at the plate, Jose Breu, and he has good at bats. His grand slam was against China. Abreu dubbed the Cuban Barry Bonds. There's a breaking ball missed, and as we mentioned, Cuba's aware that Sabomura is a fastball pitcher. So you can bet Jose Abreu is sitting on fastball right now. He's had a rough start to his night. 0 for 2, but that's a huge run down third. Last year, 35 home runs, a 392 average. That's a fair ball, and down into the corner it goes. He delivers the run, but he's going to get just a single as it kicks out to Nakata, the left fielder. And Cuba is up 3 0. Well, Abreu is the run producer in this lineup, and he cashes in. Looks like he got a breaking ball, did a pretty good job of sitting back and putting it in play. Very short stride, and he keeps it fair down the third baseline. He had five RBIs in the game last night. Salvo Moore comes in and gives up a big insurance run here in the bottom of the sixth. Alfredo Despain. Now for Cuba. Runner goes, pitches high, the throw on a hop, dug out, but dropped by Toritani. And Abreu, who stole just uh, one base last year in Cuba, has his second stolen base of the World Baseball Classic. Bad throw by Abe as it was a high breaking ball. And Cuba is taking the game to Japan right now. When we met with Victor Mesa at the start of this pool, he said, I'm going to use Abreu to steal bases. And we've seen him try to steal twice, and this time he's successful here. Another breaking ball. Abreu is 26. If you think last year's numbers for him were impressive, 35 homers, 392 average. In 2011, he hit 33 homers, drove in 93, hit 453. That was in 66 games. Want to say those numbers again, please? 33 homers, 93 runs driven in, a 453 average, 66 games. 453. <laughs> Here's the 1-1. One, one. That is a high pop. That almost hits one of the girders up on the roof. And it's caught by Matsuda. It's a retractable roof with steel girders. It's a similar roof as to, say, Miller Park in Milwaukee. Oh boy, he skied it. Up near that roof, a high fastball, but the baseman has to make some play. Now there are two down. This Spain's got a lot of power, man. <laughs> he has got a big time home run hitter swing. Speaking of home run hitters, Asmani Tomas hit a monstrous home run in his first at bat tonight. Tomas sent one about 20 rows up and what makes that impressive this is a a ballpark dimension wise that is pretty much standard major league dimensions but the fence is 19 feet from foul pole all the way around to foul pole so 20 rows up from that that's a long ways yeah and it was a no doubter in the third inning and you can see he gets all of it. The outfielders just turned and admired it. They didn't make the step toward defense because they knew it was way back and left. Third home run the Cubans have hit in this series. Ground ball short. 
Sakamoto to first in time, but Cuba adds a run. Jose Abreu drives in the sixth of the classic. All smiles for Cuba. A 3-0 lead. Both Cuba and Japan are advancing on to Tokyo, but not before they play here tonight and determine who the number one seed will be. Tomorrow's action, getting ready everywhere. Phoenix and Puerto Rico, Italy takes on Mexico, Venezuela and the Dominican Republic. Of course, once in Tokyo, Cuba will take on either Netherlands or Chinese Taipei, and of course, Japan will face either or as well. Japan will play the night game, Cuba the day game, in a day-night doubleheader in the Tokyo Dome. Should be a great atmosphere as we open up the second round of that pool. The two teams that advance out of Tokyo will go to San Francisco for the semis and finals. And both of these teams have been talking San Francisco since this pool began. Here you see the rest of that schedule in Phoenix. Canada will take on Italy Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then in Puerto Rico, Spain will take on the host team, Puerto Rico, at Iran Bithorn Stadium in San Juan. Matsuda fouls it off. Matsuda has been a pivotal hitter for Japan. Twice he's come up with a couple runners on, and both times there have been two outs, and both times he has struck out. And for Koji Yamamoto, Japan's offensive struggles tonight. He hopes, not a preview of what he's going to see in Tokyo, and I suspect, though you and I will not really be able to understand it, we'll get some translation on it that the uh, the headlines in all the papers across Japan will be about Team Japan and their offense. Can they score runs in Tokyo? 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position tonight. They've stranded 8 through 6 innings. Here's the Victor Mesa quote. A lot of uh, riders, especially the Japanese riders, wanted to know if is he worried about Japan? And his answer, the most important thing is not Japan. Japan is second. Most important is who goes to San Francisco. And of course, in order to do that, we have to compete against Japan. But as well, they're going to have to compete against the Netherlands and Chinese Taipei. We mentioned earlier that Japan has the advantage recently 5 2 over Cuba in the games played. Quick release by the shortstop, El Grillo. Cuba has never beaten. Japan in WBC play World Baseball Classic they are 0 and 3 against Japan. Chono now the center fielder. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. This was a concern for Japan coming into this tournament. They didn't have Ichiro Suzuki, who participated in the first two tournaments as their leadoff hitter. Iwamura played in the first 2006 tournament for Japan, played third base for them. Kosuke Fukunomi played as well, some major league talent on those first two ball clubs. Not the case this time around. No Hiroki Kuroda. New Darvish pitched in 2009 before he became a major leaguer but this was a sense of pride source of pride for Team Japan and they were going to do it with their own all stars from their own league and right now I think the biggest concern is are the bats going to come around in time. Well unfortunately uh, Koji Yamamoto is out of eligibility because uh, he was quite the offensive player in his day that one in the air to right. And Yosmani Tomas makes the catch. You noted all the things that he was able to do. MVPs, batting champion, home run champion, Japanese pen. You can hear the right-hander in Waikui. And Morifuku, the lefty, is up as well.
The Tokyo Dome also has hidden bullpens. Toritani is second at bat. He's in the spot that Kaz Matsui occupied. Matsui was 0 for 2. Toritani hit in the fifth for Matsui. Look at the bullpen for Cuba. Darian Nunez and Rachel Iglesias. Rachel Iglesias threw the ball very well. First time we saw him. Little roller up first and Abreu with the foot on the bag has it and a nice inning by Norberto Gonzalez one two three goes Japan and Cuba coming up seventh inning stretch in Fukuoka. Our final night in Fukuoka. Yeah Fukuoka Dome in Fukuoka. The Yahoo Dome is the old name. A retractable roof. The ballpark. And it's 3 0. Cuba on top. And it's the bottom of the seventh. Rich Waltz along with Buck Martinez. And as Buck pointed out earlier in the telecast, the folks here in Fukuoka have been terrific hosts. The food has been incredible. The hospitality great. The sights have been outstanding. Yeah, this is right on the water, and it was a very nice spring-like day today. It was spectacular outside. Masahiko Morifuku into the ball game. Ariel Sanchez, catcher for Cuba. Cranks one down the third baseline foul. Sanchez to be followed by Arua Barruena. And then Guillermo Herrera. Sanchez 0 for 2 tonight. He struck out on a wicked split finger pitch when he faced Tanaka back in the fourth, that end of the fourth inning. He's aggressive. Boy, he loves to turn that bat loose. We've seen that throughout this pool play. He's been behind the plate. Started all three games for Cuba. Sanchez is 37 and he is a 20 year pro. We go all the way back to 2004, maybe the greatest moment in Cuban baseball international history. He was the DH for the gold medal team and he hit 360. Fuku is out in front 0 and 2. Hit hard. Sakamoto dropped it and then picked it up and fired to first. We've been talking about scoring runs. No problem for Cuba. They've been able to do it with a home run and extra base hits. Big problem for Japan right now. And of the four teams headed to Tokyo, here are the numbers just with batting average to begin with. Yeah, Cuba obviously the most powerful team in the pool. We've seen them hit three home runs or average at 319. Chinese Taipei, pretty respectable. Netherlands, which is a little bit of a surprise. They had just 216 in their pool play. Barbaro Arrua Barruena. He will force you to roll your R's. And you got to be patient. You can't get in a hurry trying to say his name, that's for sure. Scouts talk about him as a major league player. You know, it's really, I don't want to say it's awkward, but certainly it's different when you talk about a Cuban player because. You know a scout can project and that's what scouts do. They're, they're looking for major league players, but they look at a guy like. El Grillo here and they say wow he, he profiles and they like what they see. 
but they don't know if he's ever going to be available to them. And so all they can do is file a report and say, you know, if he ever becomes available, here's a guy that, that they really like. Morifuku does a good job of that breaking ball. He bounces it near that back foot of Cuban shortstop and that's the first strikeout for Morifuku. It's just into the ball game. Two up, two down. Now he gets Guillermo Heredia. And he's 0 for 3. When we talk to some of the Japanese players before the game about this Cuban team, the one thing that we heard consistently from each of the players was how impressed they are with the athleticism of the Cuban players. And you can see it up and down the order. And that translates to strength and power because the Japanese players see lots of speed. In fact, Cuba really doesn't have a lot of team speed. But Itsunori Inaba, the first baseman, was very impressed. He's played six, seven times against the Japanese team, including, including the 2008 Olympics. He said the one thing that is consistent is their athleticism. He said you can see they're great athletes. Looked like that got him on the back foot. The prototypical back foot breaking ball. So with two outs here in the seventh, Yulieski Gurriel coming to the plate for Cuba. All right, Buck Martinez, both managers talked about learning something about the other team going into Tokyo. What do you think? Uh, Cuba has learned about Japan. What's Japan learned about Cuba? Well, as we take a look at this last pitch, the ball hits the back leg of Heredia. He'll go to first base. I, I think the one thing, let's start first of all with Japan. What have they learned about Cuba? And I think it was displayed when Tanaka came into the game. Use the fastball to elevate inside, finish off the at bats with the split or the slider, and Tanaka was able to rack up six strikeouts. As far as, oh, he had him leaning, didn't he? Good move by Morifuku. As Heredia was kind of hung out to dry and had to dive back in and snuck his hand underneath the tag of Inaba. Whoop. He was thinking about running. I think the one thing that Cuba has learned about the Japanese hitters and we saw it tonight they pitched them away threw them a lot of soft stuff kind of stayed away from them. We have seen throughout the course of these three games when Japan plays there are a lot of good inside out hitters but it's hard to inside out a pitch that's away from you. So I think that's something that Cuba has picked up on tonight. We saw a very animated Victor Mesa come into the ball game earlier back in the sixth inning with show Nakata at the plate saying listen this guy likes the ball inside pitch him away he steps in the bucket and he will go inside out so I think we're going to see the next time Cuba faces Japan the same kind of approach we've seen tonight work him away. He'll chopper towards the right side Toritani over for it, and he flips the first in time. So Morifuku works a scoreless seven. Eighth inning rolls around. Japan needs some runs. It's 3 0. It's the eighth in Fukuoka. Final night of play in Fukuoka. Both these teams are advancing to Tokyo. And play will start on Friday in Tokyo. But tomorrow, Phoenix and Puerto Rico cranks up. Italy and Mexico. And then Venezuela and the Dominican Republic. Anthony Rizzo. Interesting player, a lot of pop. He will play for Team Italy. Kid from South Florida. And it's a uh, good makeup. Coaching staff is pretty impressive. Mike Piazza, Frank Catalanato, Sam Palazzo. Sam Palazzo is the manager, or his former manager. He is the infield coach for Team Italy, former big league manager. 
Jason Grilly is on that team. Mike Costanzo. Alex Liddy. Alex Liddy came out of the Major League Baseball Academy in Italy. Well, we'll see a lot of guys that have come out of it. Academies with the Netherlands. We saw that with Brazil and with China. Breaking ball misses outside. Gonzalez facing. Hirokazu Ibata, Ibata followed by Shinosuke Abe, and then Hayato Sakamoto. Colorful look there. Doesn't look like anyone's left early to go home from this one. Now they uh, hang around. They're anxious to see this Japanese team rally. Japan in desperate need of a couple of hits. They got to string some things together. They are 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. They've left 8 on base tonight. 2 2. Roberto Gonzalez showing something as he strikes out Ibata. Remember, Gonzalez got that double play ball to end the sixth, worked a 1 2 3 seventh, has the first out of the eighth. Yeah, a big pivotal point in this ball game was that sixth inning. The runners at first and third, he's facing Inaba, and got Inaba to hit into the 1 6 3 double play to end that threat. Abe's had three good at bats tonight, Not, nothing to show for it. You can see though he's starting to get dialed in. He hit that BB in the pinch hitting appearance in game one. The ball that he hit to the wall obviously was crushed here. Smokes that one to left. But to Spain is there and he makes the catch. He is a, a, a hitter with good balance, power to all fields. Yeah, you can see he's a quality hitter. He's not thinking about pull, he took that pitch away from him from the left hander and lined it sharply to left. Interesting guy. He asked us about major league hitters and the kinds of bats they use tonight. Yeah, he did. Because we had questions to ask him, and then he turned around and had questions to ask us. Yeah, he asked if the major league hitters used heavy bats, and we said, no, that's just the opposite because most of the hitters. In this day and age, are a product of the aluminum bats as kids, and they use lighter bats. He told us his bat was 940 grams. Figured that one out? No, not yet. <laughs> but he did say 34 inches long. It is 33 ounces, as we found out. We did some research, and it's 34 inches long and 33 ounces. That's a a sizable bat. Most of the bats in the major leagues these days would be 31, 32 ounces. Just five hits and no runs for Samurai Japan. That's the official nickname of Team Japan. I think it's starting to get in their heads that they haven't been able to drive the ball. Well, there, there's an enormous amount of pressure. They have advanced, obviously. But at the same time, everybody in this country is expecting another trophy. We had a chance when we visited the Asada Horo Museum today to see one of the World Baseball Classic trophies on display. I believe that was the one that Sadahara O himself had a, a hand in acquiring. Yeah, he managed the team in 2006. I had the tremendous honor of managing against him in Anaheim, second round of the 2006 World Baseball Classic. What was that like when you, you got to the plate? Yeah, it was tremendous honor. Fouled at the plate? Bob Davidson was the home plate umpire. And we took the lineup cards out to home plate, and Bob Davidson, veteran of many seasons in the big leagues, grabbed the lineup card from Mr. O, grabbed the lineup card from me, and says, Mr. O, how many home runs did you hit? And he said, oh, 868. He, Bob Davidson looked at me and said, Buck. And I said, oh, thanks a lot, Bob. <laughs> 
Bouncer in the hole. El Grillo. Nice arm. And that's why the scouts really like this young Cuban shortstop. Sakamoto bounces out. Japan still having trouble with the bats. 3 0 Cuba. Well, all the activity in Pool A is almost done with Japan and Cuba advancing to Tokyo. Takuro Iwamura comes in to take over for Japan. It's the bottom of the eighth. Cuba, the home team here, and on top by a score of three to nothing. The Netherlands and Chinese Taipei already have worked out at the Tokyo Dome. Another workout day tomorrow, which will include a later workout. You see uh, Ryoji Aikawa behind the plate for Japan. Japan and Cuba work out tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, and then Friday, it's day-night doubleheader. In day one of the second round from Tokyo. Andy Banez came into the ball game as a defensive replacement for the pinch runner, Luis Rivera. Banez came into the ball game in the seventh inning. This is his first at bat. He's 19 years old. Great experience, great opportunity for Banez. We mentioned earlier this is a nice mix of experience and youth as they're trying to break in some of their younger players on the national scene. It's three nothing. Cuba's on top. If you're just waking up or just going to bed, you want to see what's happened here. Look at this bomb. That's a 19 foot wall and that's 20 rows in. And that's Yosmani Tomas and that gave Cuba a one nothing lead. Now good news for Japan is that their ace Masahiro Tanaka in relief looked good. This a key double play for Cuba against Slugger Atsunori in Naba that finished the sixth. Japan has not scored. Cuba has three runs. And Cuba three outs away from emerging from Pool A as the number one seed from Pool A going into Tokyo. Yasmani Tomas showed his manager that he was swinging a hot bat. He earned himself a start tonight. And you can bet after hitting that long home run, he's probably going to get some opportunities to do some damage in Tokyo. Now, if Cuba wins this game and is the number one seed exiting Fukuoka heading to Tokyo, they will get the Netherlands, who's the number two seed coming out of Pool B, which means you would get Cuba against the Netherlands if this score holds the first game on Friday. And then you get Japan against Chinese Taipei in the nightcap. A lot of scenarios are going to unfold on Friday. Cepeda takes a walk and he will be removed from the ball game in favor of Alexei Bell. Bell is an outfielder who got hit during the exhibition games prior to this tournament on the hand. He got a little bit of a sore finger, and that's why he didn't start this game tonight, but nothing wrong with his wheels. So he will give Cepeda the rest of the night off. And here comes Abreu. RBI single down the left field line in the sixth. The Abreu has knocked in six runs. Give me your MVP for Cuba. Yeah, and there is a pool MVP in this tournament, and he certainly has provided the pop in the lineup for Cuba. Grand Slam, five RBIs against China, and a big RBI in this game, a little insurance run. And he hit one just inside the foul line down the left field line, drove in a run in the sixth. Runner goes. That ball is absolutely crushed, but foul. But fun to see how far it goes up those seats. That's a long ways. Abreu is starting to look dangerous. Boy, he's having some good at bats, and he sits back on this off-speed pitch. Yeah, boy, that is a beautiful swing. Short stride, quick hands, and he jumped all over that inside pitch, but pulls it well foul.
Fastball is up. We'd mentioned this earlier. I see an awful lot of Tony Perez, a Cuban born big leaguer that had such a great run with the Cincinnati Reds, part of the big red machine, and he was a right handed hitter like Abreu, and I could see a lot of similarities in his approach. Bell from first, Iwamura chases him back. There's one out in the eighth. We mentioned earlier in the tournament that according to Stats Inc. There have been 177 Cuban born major leaguers. A rich tradition of great baseball. Well and I mean you could also talk about second generation. Cubans born in the United States. Guys like John Jay Gio Gonzalez. Sean Rodriguez J.P. Aaron Sebia Gabby Sanchez. That would be an incredible team if you could take this team the best of this team the Cuban national team right now and like other countries plug in the Cuban born players who are playing in the major leagues uh, Yuenes Cespedes or all this Chapman. You know Escobar then mix in those of Cuban heritage. Runner goes that ball liner into left field and Abreu continues to swing a hot bat the throw to third and in there safely is Bell. Now the pinch runner goes first to third and beats a good throw and Abreu we mentioned he's starting to heat up this is a hanging breaker ball inside this time he keeps it fair. No stride whatsoever just trusts his hands to get to that ball and he does it easily. A couple more hits tonight for Abreu and well you mentioned it back in the fourth inning a couple of runners on he squared to bunt on the first pitch of that at bat that really kind of got him out of sync. He ended up striking out in the fourth inning and as we noted you got to think that was Victor Mesa trying to send a message maybe not necessarily to Abreu but also or possibly to the uh, the guys that were watching the other guys in the lineup. As if to say, hey, if I'm going to ask him to do this. Nobody is beyond being asked to do anything to help us win a ball game. That is Victor Mesa. That is the guy that when Unieski Betancourt got to the big leagues, one of the long line of great Cuban shortstops, someone asked him if he would be intimidated by major league managers. He scoffed. I played for Victor Mesa. <laughs> Nobody will scare me. Oh, one pitch. Driven. Left center. Deep. Chono to the wall. Gone. Wow. Alfredo de Spain. The 19 foot wall in deepest, darkest left center field. Couldn't hold it. And Cuba is flexing their muscles. And now they're pounding Japan. Yeah, and this is the one thing that Victor Mesa wanted to make sure it happened here tonight that they didn't lose their momentum. They beat China 12 0. Mercy ruled them. They were up by 12 runs after six and a half. And that game was shortened in. The power bats have returned here tonight. Second home run of the night, and it's a 3 1 shot. We told you this Spain likes the fastball, and that one is upstairs about a letter high, and he jumped all over it. Extra base hits, something Japan hasn't had a lot of. The yeah. outset of the telecast, we talked about two teams wanting to make a statement headed towards Tokyo. You know, the seeding, one or two, not a great deal of importance on that, but both managers treating this as a elimination type game. And you got to think just in watching tonight the reaction of this Japanese team the way the Cubans are playing 
that uh, there may be some intimidation involved and the Cubans are the ones that are doing the intimidating. Well you can see the preview for the second round it, during the first round Cuba has 10 extra base hits Chinese Taipei and the Netherlands. They also have extra base power they have eight extra base hits each. Japan has one that came off the bat of Yoshi Toy a three run double in the fifth inning against China and they needed it desperately to beat China as they were really held tough China scored two in the ninth but Japan beat China by just five two and they mustered only six hits against China. That's a concern for their manager. Koji Yamamoto. Boy that's going to be interesting to see the newspapers you made a point about that when we get to Tokyo just see what the sports newspapers say about the prospects of Japan in the second round. Tomas who hit the long home run in the third inning strikes out. So two outs here in the eighth. You know the script of 06 and 09 has been Puerto Rico is loaded Venezuela is loaded Dominicans loaded Team USA is loaded and a lot of people yeah Japan's pretty good Korea's pretty good. Well Korea and Japan have been really good Japan of course has won 06 and won in 09. You wonder if this is the year where finally Someone from the other side gets to the championship game. Yeah big surprise of course is that Korea didn't advance out of the first round of pool play. Team USA is going to open up their quest to the finals with R.A. Dickey. Going up against Mexico when they start their pool play. Ariel Sanchez with that base hit to right field now Sanchez will come out. As a pinch runner comes on Raul Gonzalez we had a chance to briefly chat with him behind the batting cage today. Gonzalez takes over for Sanchez. Ten hits now for Cuba. Round two preview first round pitching look at the ERA for Cuba. Cuba beat Brazil five to two a couple unearned runs the uh, mercy rule win over China twelve nothing and now they're pounding Japan six nothing. Cuba has an ace we saw him against Brazil Ishmael Jimenez. Four and two thirds four hits didn't walk about and struck out six. It's going to be interesting to see how the four teams set up their pitching. When will Chen Meng Wong pitch for Chinese Taipei coming off a great start his first time out. Well it looks like uh, Chinese Taipei will be facing Japan. And that doesn't bode well for Japan's chances if they send Chen Meng Wong to the mound. He went six innings and threw just 61 pitches. So the next round he'll have 80 pitches to work with in that start. So that'll be an interesting matchup should they choose to open up the second round with Chen Ming Wong starting for Chinese Taipei. Yeah for a team that uh, isn't scoring runs running into a guy that right now is hot and motivated. You talked about a guy that's a free agent. There's major league teams certainly interested looking for starting pitching last minute shoppers so to speak. A video strikes out. And right now, Cuba. Another home run. This one a three run shot. Fredo de Spain. It's been a long night for the fans here. Japan right now, going into the ninth, down 6 0. Our exit polls allow us to project Cuba as the winner here. And if they hold this 6 0 lead in the ninth, they will take on 
the Netherlands who is the number two seed coming out of pool B. That means Japan would open up against the number one seed Chinese Taipei and as Buck pointed out they might have a date with Chin Ming Wong. Yeah and Cuba has not fared that well against Netherlands in past international play. They're a little concerned about the Netherlands team and in my mind Netherlands is a stronger team this year than they were in 2009. Oh I, I, I would wholeheartedly agree. I don't think they're Cinderella's anymore. Yoshio Itoy comes up. Norberto Gonzalez stays on for Cuba on the mound. Here's Itoy. Single has bounced out, also has walked. Gonzalez uh, has been sharp. He's retired everyone he's faced. Drive to center, hit well. Heredia is there and he makes the catch. Nice play by the speedy center fielder. And there's an out here in the ninth. Boy, Heredia has got good range. He saw that ball off the bat very well, turned and broke toward center. And makes the catch and retires Etoy. And no sooner did the ball land in the glove of Heredia than Victor Mesa appeared on the mound. The manager of this Cuban team, and he's going to make a pitching change. He's uh, looking towards the dugout, and again, the bullpens are hidden from view. But he's got a guy coming out right now, and it looks like. Uh, Raciel Iglesias. Raciel Iglesias pitched earlier in this pool. The chance to give him a little bit of a tune up before they head to Tokyo. We'll step aside. It's 6 0 Cuba. Raciel Iglesias just threw a breaking ball. Show Nakata swung and missed, and Iglesias comes in with one out, trying to seal the deal here in the ninth. Six nothing, Cuba on top. Nakata has looked the best tonight at the plate for Japan. He has a pair of hits. He reached on his other AB. It was a sharp ground ball that went for an error. He has two of the five hits set. Japan has mustered tonight against Cuba. Iglesias pitched against Brazil and he was sharp. He worked three innings, allowed one hit, didn't walk a batter, and struck out five. So not only are the Cubans swinging the bats, it's pretty good pitching. They're not walking anybody. They haven't really gotten themselves in trouble with the base on balls, and they have the ability to rack up the strikeouts. One, two coming. Breaking ball. Did he go? No, says Alfonso Marquez. Jerry Davis, Alfonso Marquez, big league umpires, will be also making the trip. They don't have a workout day tomorrow, though. No. Chris Guccione has also been in this pool. He will travel to Tokyo. They will be joined by umpires from the Pool B from Taiwan. Two two up. Iglesias, he's just 22 years old. So this team has really brought the young players along very effectively. Up and in. And show Nakata. Trots down to first base. Now, Nakata's been on base all four times tonight. Katsuya Kakunaka. So Kakunaka comes up here, the 25 year old. Now, this is a guy who has a, an interesting path to the big leagues here in Japan. He was an independent league player 
And Bobby Valentine signed. And he got to the big leagues with Chiba Lada. And in his first full season, he won the Pacific League Batting Championship. Pretty good scouting by Bobby Valentine. He was the first player. It was the first time a player who played the independent league was an all-star as well. Quite a rise for a player not drafted. They have draft here as well. High school players are drafted. Many of the star players are former number one picks, but this is a very unique player in Japanese baseball history. What they don't have is a deep minor league system. They have the industrial league, which is a essentially the triple A for the professional league, the Nippon Professional Baseball, the major leagues for Japan. But below that, it it thins out pretty quickly. We told you they, the great high school baseball programs and the great high school baseball tournament they have here in Japan. So that's strong. College baseball here in Japan. And if you think this is a good atmosphere here in Fukuoka, make sure you join us on Friday. We'll have a double header from the Tokyo Dome. Bigger ballpark, bigger crowd, and certainly they'll want to encourage Japan to turn things around in that second round of the WBC. The youngster Iglesias trying to finish it for Cuba. Nakanaka hitting in Inaba's spot. Nakanaka hit 312 last year for Lote. Well, in 61 runs. His walk up song's pretty good, too. <laughs> There's no give up in the fans, that's for sure. They're still in this ball game. It's a breaking ball. Just went around the outside corner. And the catcher was set up outside. That's Frank Mora Hong. He's taken over for Sanchez. Now the 3 2 coming. And it's down low. We haven't seen uh, a lot of patience out of Victor Mesa tonight. Japan's going to send up a pinch hitter now. Yuichi Honda. And you can see he's a hometown guy. Yeah, they were. Happy to hear his name announced as the pinch hitter. Cuba's got a 6 0 lead. Victor Mesa is going to the bullpen yet again. Not done just yet here in Fukuoka. 6 0. Cuba on top of Japan, runners first and second. And a bunt that lands foul. Nice effort by Frank Morahone. The pinch hitter for Japan, Yuichi Honda. Honda facing Darian Nunez, who pitches for Las Tunas. Nunez, a 19 year old rookie. Chance to get a little work in here, trying to close things out for Cuba. 
But one thing's for sure if he doesn't throw strikes he won't be there long. We've seen that with Victor Mesa balls in the dirt and this isn't going to please the Cuban manager much at all. You know, a lot of times when a, when a pitcher comes in to, to warm up he gets a pat on the back from the manager. He is animated. He doesn't care if it's six nothing. He didn't want to allow Japan to get anything going, build any momentum. It's been a disappointing night for Japan. They've been shut out on just five hits, and now they're threatening to get on the scoreboard. Yeah, he wants a shutout. And that pitches up and in. Now Honda's 28. So he's a little older. And look at him. He says, Got any more pitchers back there? <laughs> Give me another pitcher. Give me the one that can throw strikes. He has not had much patience at all for anybody tonight. You know, he, the best guy for Cuba tonight was Noberto Gonzalez. Who threw 33 pitches, retired everyone that he faced. Yeah, and there was no concern over the pitch count, obviously. I mean, he could have thrown 49 without having any significant implications. But and, and he started this inning and got the first out, and Mesa lifted him, and it's been chaos since. Three and one. To Honda, who has his own his own cheer in Fukuoka. <laughs> Here he comes. And, oh, I tell you what, this is uh, if you are a Cuban pitcher and you do not throw strikes, and it's it's give me the ball next. Last reliever standing for the Cubans here tonight. Now everybody in that hidden bullpen can watch the game. They've seen what uh, Victor Mesa has been going through here. And so Vladimir Garcia was warming up and he's the next guy up. Right there. He turned to the scoreboard and said listen it's six nothing. I want you to just get some outs. We got one out. We need two more outs and we go home. Okay? It's six nothing. Don't get cute. Don't walk anybody. Just get two outs. Earlier in the uh, tournament, Buck Martinez uh, ventured that it's a combination of Lou Pinella and Ozzie Gain, and I threw out Bobby Knight for good measure tonight. Now, he's the only Chono now, the leadoff hitter. He's 0 for 3. And he goes after the first pitch. Of course, you're down six nothing. Three guys have walked, and he goes after a fastball that looked like it was up and out. Yeah, fastball up and away. And Vladimir Garcia, 14 and five last year, 171 ERA. And he gets ahead. Uh, Chono here. Cuba wins this game they get Netherlands on day one and Japan would get Chinese Taipei and I don't know that on the uh, team charter any of the relief pitchers are going to sit anywhere near Victor Mason. No, they'll be in the back of the plane for sure. I tell you what you got to give these fans credit they have never lost faith in the home team. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. That's out. You talk about improbable comebacks. We saw one last night where Team China scored five runs in the bottom of the eighth against Brazil. Five runs on two hits. And Brazil, Barry Larkin said it after the ball game. Brazil just unraveled and could not throw strikes. Here's the 2-1 pitch. That's way out. 
Now you think about that first pitch he swung at, and yeah. Garcia hasn't thrown a pitch over the plate yet. You just got to wonder if Yamamoto is going to put a take on right now. He's not been close. Well, and how much has Victor Mesa gotten in the head of anyone that has a, a baseball out of the bullpen? Yeah, and you know, certainly now they created a lot of tension among the pitchers, that's for sure. Up the middle, diving stop, El Trio, and he'll have to eat it. Japan is on the board, an infield hit for Chono. Well, what a play by the shortstop, Arue Baruena. He knocked it out, kept it on the infield. He saved a run, at least for the time being. High fastball, Chono tops it up the middle. It's got a chance to sneak through. Arreu Baro Buena couldn't make a toss for a possible force at second. All hands are safe. Still just one out. And here is Toritani, who is 0 for 2. Got the tying run. And uh, Ibata on deck. Remember, Japan took Shinosuke Abe out of the game. So he's no longer in that cleanup spot. Troy Tani came in the ballgame as a pinch hitter in the fifth. He has gone 0 for 2. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Drive to center. And Heredi is there, makes the catch. Runners tag from second and from third. And scoring the second run. Team Japan now down four, but down to their last out. And guess who's coming out to the mound? How about this? Mesa has come out. He's Eight. telling the catcher to get back. Isn't that interesting? This is just a message to his pitcher. Listen, now we got two outs. Hey, what can he be telling him now? Give one more out and the game is over? But he didn't want the catcher out there. He didn't want the infielders out I'm, there. That's a man, I, I've never seen a manager tell the catcher to turn around and go back to the plate. I mean, don't you want the catcher to hear what you're saying? Not that he hasn't heard it all already. I got to tell you, I did it in the major leagues once. But I went out to the mound to talk to a pitcher in the first inning because I wasn't pleased about his effort. And I told the catcher, just stay right there. I got something to say to the pitcher, and I felt like it was better one on one. See, I missed that game. Yeah. Mace has gotten his work in running to the mound tonight. Well, Garcia is going to stay in, at least for now. So on the sack fly that chases home another run tie run is still on deck and here is Ibata ball in the dirt. Um, this has got to be a little bit of a boost for Japan. They're on the scoreboard. Mind you they haven't faced the best pitchers. Once he took Roberto Gonzalez out of the game, he was just trying to give some young guys a little experience, and that kind of backfired. Gonzalez was terrific, and he got the first out of this inning. And three straight walks, an infield hit, a sack fly, and Japan now down to their last out. And Roberto Gonzalez was four pitchers ago. In the right. That's a base hit. Honda scores. And now the tying run will come to the plate. Ivata with an RBI single. And it's six to three. Number three hitter. Hirokazu Ivata, his second hit of the night, drives in a run, shoots it past. The first baseman in to right. Ichi Honda, pinch hitter. That's brought life into that dugout for Japan. A 
Mason moving a way way back at first. He didn't care about the runners advancing in this situation. Ryoji Aikawa, the backup catcher, is in there and he takes outside. Had Victor Mesa stuck with Roberto Gonzalez, there's a, a good chance everyone would be on their way home. As it is, he went to his bullpen, and ever since then, no one could get any outs. That one's lifted in the air and out of play, and the count's one and one. Akawa is a regular catcher. He's played more than 100 games in seven different seasons. He doesn't have a whole lot of power. Doesn't have a lot of power, but he is a regular. It's not as if he's a backup catcher. Chono's at second. Ibata's at first. And Garcia. That's a strike. That's a tough pitch. Outside corner. A good pitch by Vladimir Garcia. Big breaking ball catches the outside corner. You can see on that shot there is a reliever, another one warming up in the Cuban bullpen. One two pitch and a swing and a miss. Did he get a foul tip? Nope. Jerry Davis said ball game. It's over. And Cuba. A big exhale for Victor Mesa and Cuba although it looks like Koji Yamamoto is pleased that his ball club got up off the canvas and scored three runs in the ninth Cuba a 6 3 win they are the number one seed coming out of pool a they will get the Netherlands in a game that will start in the afternoon at the uh, Tokyo Dome on Friday and for Team Japan they get Chinese Taipei the one seed coming out of pool B. It's the first time Cuba has beaten Japan in the World Baseball Classic. A little bit of a monkey off of their back and you got to give Japan credit for battling back. They scored three in a ninth although it was against the second tier the relief pitchers and Victor Mesa very animated but you got to wonder just what that did to the relief core for Cuba. Their psyche. Yeah. It was a tough night for them. Uh, once again, we saw the power, that's for sure. Yeah, a lot of power for Cuba. Japan put some runs on the board late, and it's on to Tokyo. And a tip of the cap to the fans here in Fukuoka. It continues tomorrow, does the World Baseball Classic. We'll see indeed get underway. Italy and Mexico, Venezuela, and the Dominican Republic. Check your local listings for the game times in your area. For Buck Martinez, our entire World Baseball Classic crew, I'm Rich Waltz in Fukuoka. What a terrific week it has been, filled with great stories. The comeback from China, the story of Ray Chang. This, the game winner last night, and an emotional win for the Chinese beating Brazil. And here tonight, the power of Yasmani Tomas and Cuba on display. We'll see you in Tokyo, folks. This proceeding has been a special presentation of the World Baseball Classic.